Uh, okay. Just give me two seconds, please, if you don't mind. No problem. Ladies and gentlemen, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Starting live from YouTube as well as from Zoom. I'm really privileged to welcome my dear friend, Bashawan. president, founder of okay. uh, founder of Jumpstart uh, Pakistan, Hurram Zuberi. Let's round of applause to Hurram, everybody. So I'm happy welcoming him to Turkish Starting community. From YouTube as well as from Thank you. I'm, I'm really, really honored to have you, uh, Hurram. It's a very immense pleasure for me because, uh, you know, I want to thank first and foremost to Qatar Fund for Development, Qatar Charity and Spark from Holland for uh, the opportunity and especially to Bina Business Incubator, which you were actually a guest when you visited shortly Istanbul. We started with 96 company, Dirra, and then uh, bring it down to 59 after a, a you know, pre-incubation program and two days of immense, intense jury review. Now 59 companies are in the second phase. The program's name is Bridge Global. So we are trying to uh, bridge everyone to global, inshallah. And who would be better than you? Who connects United States with uh, Pakistan? Who is actually trying to change Pakistan through entrepreneurship? So I, I want to thank you again on behalf of Bina Incubator, Qatar Charity, Qatar Fund for Development, SPARC, and the entire Turkish entrepreneur community for being with us, Brother Huram. Welcome to uh, uh, Fireside Chat today. No, thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much for all this love and uh, your kind words. Um, seriously, glad to be here. And um, inshallah, as we proceed further, then we're going to have like an interesting conversation about how we proceed further in our journeys. Um, and me being like an entrepreneur since the age of 18, I've seen a lot around the world and also in developing world. Um, so we'd love to interact with all your uh, colleagues and uh, you know, there's a gem of people you actually kind of uh, made this bouquet in which ultimately the, that will achieve a lot of, a lot of things in their lives. And uh, would love to be part of that uh, uh, you know, their journey and uh, contribute in any way possible. Thank you. Uh, uh, brother Huram, you know, for my brothers to get to know and for all the viewers, listeners in uh, on live on YouTube, as well as in our class here on Zoom, uh, can you tell who Huram Zuberi is? What motivates Huram? What excites Huram? You know, I'm not interested in what you eat or drink. And on a personal level, we can discuss that. But really, because I had the best time and best food in Pakistan, by the way. But, uh, you know, what really motivates and excites Hurra? And, and tell about yourself, brother. Uh, thank you, brother Yavis. Uh, so my, uh, I had a very humble beginning. Although, like, I come from a family which is uh, very educated. Like, my grandfather was, like, I think twice, thrice, I may in different languages and everything. And uh, my father was uh, um, a metallurgical engineer and uh, you know, uh, my uncles the same way. Um, so very learned family, but at the same time, very humble beginnings. Um, but since from the beginning, I think for me was to kind of like, uh, uh, you know, not just the business. I mean, at that particular time, like it wasn't about the startups. I mean, the startup terminology wasn't even, you know, around. Um, although the, you know, the Apple was formed, Microsoft was formed, Oracle was there, uh, all these tech companies was there. But my aspiration was more sort of like, okay, let's explore what's going to be the future. So for me, the future is very important, that what's coming next. Um, and usually everybody wants to look around what's, what's around the curve. Everybody wants to actually calculate that. But for me, it was, uh, had to be very calculated um, um, you know, uh, uh, very calculated move in terms of the actual, what are the factors which are ultimately going to be deciding what's going to be in the future. So since then, I've been trying to actually keep myself abreast of what is happening around the world. Um, and with that kind of like experience, because I have the biggest consumer electronics show in the world, which is called CES, um, happens in Vegas. Um, every year uh, and then also several other places like it also happens uh, in China. 
Uh, so I never miss those events. Uh, and that helps me see what's going to be in the future, like in three, four years time. So I can tell you what's going to be in your bedroom, what's going to be in your living room, what TV you're going to be watching in, what phone you're going to be holding, what the screen is going to look like, what uh, technology we are talking about. The AI, everybody is excited about like chat GPT-4 and all that. Uh, I knew that that's going to happen like four years ago. Um, actually, I knew that like 20 years ago, but the, my whole calculation was all wrong. Um, so I went into, did the master's in um, AI when nobody knew about the AI. The only the two universities in the world uh, used to have the, the course run on the AI. Um, the, so you the have a master's in artificial intelligence, right? A master's in artificial intelligence. From which university, brother? Um, it was uh, Brunel uh, in London. Um, so the other university used to offer that was the MIT. Um, so had uh, my focus was during the, that master's was that how is going to impact the human life. So mine was more sort of like a philosophical, although we did the, um, there used to be languages, now it's Python, but it used to be Lisp and Prolog um, in mid nineties. Um, and even the internet was just about, you know, uh, in, the, in our hands, like we used, we had to actually dial up. You probably will remember those days uh, so in the internet wasn't even mature, yes, but do. we were talking about AI. So um, that's me, technologist, but at the same time, um, I love uh, you know solving problems through entrepreneurship. And entrepreneurship is a lifestyle. And I, I uh, you know, tell everybody, like I suggest to everybody, if you want to live the most interesting life while you're here, it's a very short life, it's only given once. Um, so if you want to live that life more in a most interesting way, become an entrepreneur and it's not an easy life it's a very very difficult life you never know what's going to happen tomorrow your family is going to actually forsake you uh your parents is going to actually tell you you are no good uh your siblings is going to be actually passing um uh, putting you behind and they're going to be uh you know passing the classes in flying colors and you're going to be feeling you're going to be all alone all your life your wife if you're lucky, probably going to support you, probably not. Your kids are going to think that you are the waste of this world. Um, but there's going to be a day when everybody is going to be actually sitting in front of you and you're going to be actually on the mic and you're going to say, here we are. And all of them would realize that they were wrong about you. And that's the moment you should work for. So that's me. <laughs> Thank you. That's amazing. That's amazing. So it's a choice to... And it's a huge sacrifice, like you said. And uh, we have here many companies from different backgrounds. And maybe later on, they may, a couple of them may present you their pitches to get your feedback as well, just, uh, you know, uh, just to have your valuable opinion. But, you know, as an entrepreneur, as you're going to the international markets, you know, what are the things uh, one entrepreneur should pay attention as you're trying to become global? Uh, being someone connecting the Western culture with Eastern culture, someone who lives in Chicago and goes back and forth between Islamabad, you know, Rivalpindi, Punjab, and, and other places, and, and come back to United States, and also UK. You have seen being in the diaspora, uh, you know, Pakistani uh, American community, and also trying to change Pakistan through entrepreneurship. What are the things? whether it's a Pakistan entrepreneur or a Turkish entrepreneur or any other entrepreneur should pay attention as they're trying to go global. So brother, yeah, was, um, I mean, that's a very common question, but at the same time, I think not uh, justified enough when people actually answer that. Um, there's a, this intention in a built in us when, when we actually build something and it's, it's, it's a human thing. If any kid would write something, design something, they would just rush to their parents. They want to show the world that this is what, what they have done. And this thing needs to be controlled. If you are really true entrepreneur, you're just not going to rush to things. You're going to calculate that what's going to be the outcome of it if I do that. So this is our human nature that we want to actually go to the furthest corner of the world to actually start selling it. We want people to actually have our product in their hand or our service for them to actually use our service, which we actually built from the scratch. But the real important thing is, 
And every entrepreneur actually makes a mistake. I did make those mistakes in my earlier startups. We look at the actual problem. So for instance, we are a parent and then we have a kid and all of a sudden this new human being actually comes into our lives. So all of a sudden we, have, we need diapers. So we think we, we have this problem that diapers leak. So all of a sudden we look, start looking into actually coming up and manufacturing new diapers. So the, both parents would start thinking that if we actually start making a diapers, we start looking, making inquiries that how the diapers are made. Same thing happens when uh, the, you know, the infant actually become a toddler. Obviously now is the time to for teach them to, for, to give them books, some learning books. We start looking into actually designing some books. So the, the very journey starts from the problem. And we think that the problem we have or we pinpointed that somebody has is a lot of people, will, the whole world has that problem. That's not true. You have to focus. You have to really pinpoint that how many people have that problem, what's their gender, what are the demographics, what their age group is, where they live, what their culture, would they even use it? I mean, these are the simple questions, 15, 20 questions you can ask. And then ultimately you will realize that your market is not 1 billion people. And that's usually you would see in the pitch deck that are the market of this product is 1 billion people. No, your market is not 1 billion people. Please focus. So, and then we fall in love with our solution. You know, we keep talking about, you know, my app does this and this has this feature and that has that feature. That guy is not really interested in your app. What he is interested in is what it does and can it solve its problem. So these both things are the problem. Your entrepreneurial journey starts from the point that who is going to be that person who's going to be using your product and what kind of problem that person has. And that's coming back to your question. What are, who are those people? Where do they live? Which country they live in? Do they live around me? Do they live in my neighborhood? Do they live in my city? Do they live in my country? Do they live in my neighboring country? Do they live like, you know, seven seas away, totally on the other side of the globe? So the decision is not based on how far it is from your local location. The decision should be based on that who is your customer? If that customer is in the United States, you go there. If that customer is in Russia, you go there. If that customer is in South Africa, you go there. Might be that that customer is more folk, uh, more cut out for your product than even the person living in your neighborhood. So focus on that customer and wherever that customer is. And then there are like further steps where you look at the market, market analysis, uh, look at that, the, how market actually performs. Are there any competitors? Are there other people who are going to be uh, really challenging you? Uh, or what are the other aspects or challenges you're going to have. Maybe the local guy is going to know about the laws and you are you don't know about the law. You don't know their language, et cetera, et cetera. And then I can go on for, but the focus is on the person who's going to buy your product. I love it. So to focus on customers is really the key, like you said. You know, when I designed this uh, program, uh, Dear Hurram, uh, I sat down with Mustafa Sakaz, the director of Bina, I told them, we want to be different from all the other incubators around the globe. So what we did, since you are an artificial intelligence expert, one of the first, uh, we sat down and utilized ChatGBT. As ChatGBT, the best way to uh, you know, enter global markets and prepare and design a study, a content based on that. So this is the first artificial intelligence designed incubation program we put together for the Turkish and global entrepreneurs. Each of my module, you know, starting with the uh, ecosystem, entrepreneurship ecosystem in Turkey and global, growth hacking, uh, you know, startup uh, legal matters, you know, uh, patents and trademark, uh, you know, market dynamic, dynamic marketing, uh, uh, all the canvas and all the other trainings, as well as, you know, when you look at it, the market research, how to access markets using market access strategies, financial planning, 
uh, and uh, you know uh, the risk management. Uh, we we created modules looking into international marketing, localization, how to localize things, how to develop business, being culturally sensitive, you know, and then all the VC funds, how to manage investors, how to do you know effective presentations. Uh, and all of these and many other, we created special, uh, you know, uh, startup bootcamp, uh, um, I would say, mm -hmm. tools for our startups to keep exactly what you're saying, keep focusing on the customers. And then asking the same question and getting the feedback from different ways, from Dave Macler Pirate Analysis to, you know, uh, Porter's Five Forces. We have done all different analysis of really customer how to manage customer at every level so each startup here is really driven like you said to understand the customer uh, so in that sense you're talking exactly the same language they want to hear brother uh, and uh, like you said if you fell in love with your product it's a huge problem yes you should love your product but you should love your customer more and able to modify your product and MVP and others based on the customer needs. Uh, so you were ahead of time when you studied AI. How does it feel uh, to be ahead of time always, brothers? I'm very curious to hear that. So um, I think one of my teacher was kind of like influenced that he, uh, when I was, uh, I don't know whether how many of uh, people here like would be able to actually relate uh, I was uh, kind of in my teens and uh, I, I did this computer course uh, um, uh, and I was into the computers. I was probably in my whole city. You, you saw that city, by the way. Uh, you've been to that city, Rawapindi, and uh, that's where I grew up. So uh, in the whole city, I think, you know, one or two, one is, was my house and maybe like a couple of more houses would have the computer. At that time, nobody had the computer. I mean, offices probably would have it, but not the house like that you would actually have the desktop computer in your house. Um, and then I, I made this choice that, uh, you know, when I completed my 10th grade, uh, my father said to me like, uh, okay, what do you wanna, uh, he was, he was going to buy me a motorbike because I had actually had to go to the college. Uh, but I said, no, I can just keep using the bike, uh, bicycle, uh, but I need the computer. <laughs> and uh, that computer was like with a 20 megabyte hard drive and then floppy eight, um, you know, five quarter inches and, you know, 640K kilobyte RAM and all that. And at that time, you know, funny enough, at that time, there was a, there was a program which could be constituted towards a AI program. And that program was used to run on a floppy. And then you would enter that this is your, um, you know, date of birth. This is your inclination to do certain things. And uh, this is what it is. And to, after five questions, that program will start to start telling you about yourself, that this is what your personality, that's how you approach things. And I was amazed that, you know, like back in uh, early, late 80s, um, it, there was some software written, which used to calculate our stars that, okay, this is what your star is based on your date of birth. And this is how you're gonna perform. And this is how you, so for me, it was like very, fascinating um, you know my relatives used to come and I would just ask them okay tell me I'll tell you about yourself this machine would tell you about what you're going to do and how you're going to perform and all that so uh, so that was kind of like a time another thing you have to realize is that which I realized afterwards uh, there is a scientist uh, you probably would have come across that scientist uh, that's he, he was in uh, 50s Alan Turing so uh, to what what uh, we, to date, we say that uh, the Turing test is gonna be ultimately the benchmark when the AI would take over. So the one of the Turing test is that if you are communicating with something and that could be human or machine, and you cannot figure it out whether you've been communicating with the machine or the human, you are behind the curtain. And if you are able to do that on that day, we have achieved singularity. And just Google the singularity. I don't want to go into detail. So that thing, I realized that, you know, at some point in time, my calculation was probably would happen like by 2010, 9, 8, 12. Um, but it took a while. 
by 2019, um, um, you know, Turing test was passed by 72%. And Alan said it was gonna be, uh, uh, as long as it's been done by 68%, um, uh, the test has been passed, but it was done 72%. And we have seen the blue, IBM blue, um, you know, the computers actually defeated the, uh, the chess master. Um, uh, and they used to calculate 200 million moves of the chess on different time. So the AI ultimately is going to be a place where, um, you know, it's gonna be very difficult to predict. And um, I'm afraid uh, that this is gonna be the situation. Now, how to counter that? And that could be your next, uh, or for the startups to look into that, well, how does it benefit us? How does it, how can we cater it? How, how can we benefit from it? And I would just suggest them, it's not about the chat GPT, okay? The AI is like a broader perspective. It's, okay. it's gonna encompass everything. Yeah. I'll just give you one, one example. Um, Amazon has become literally the global leader in terms of the commerce. It's not just about the e-commerce mm -hmm. anymore. It's literally, that's how we buy our stuff. That's how this stuff gets mm -hmm. home. This is how you find, you actually find nails or the screws of which you won't be able to find anywhere on Amazon. You find exactly. milk, you want eggs, anything. Now, Amazon is looking into have a dark warehouse. Now, if any one of you have ever had looked at it or studied the, how the Amazon warehouse works, you would be amazed at how multi-million combinations of products coming into multi, going into multi-million businesses or the people. Now, this job itself to actually may do this matchmaking is, is, is by itself is a challenge. So what they are saying that we're gonna have like a warehouse which is not gonna have any human in it. I see. Now imagine the truck would come in, it would have tons of products, which is gonna be packed into the boxes. Imagine that one box, let's say uh, 40 inch by 32 inch by uh, 20 inch box, mm -hmm. which would have like probably uh, quantity of X, Y, Z in uh, of 20 quantity of X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. that box, let's say, imagine there are 200 boxes in one container. Okay. Now that container has to offload. After offloading that boxes has to be unpacked. Then it needs to be stored. Then it needs to be, um, um, uh, you know, calculated that how many products are there. Then it needs to be go into the system that these many products are into the warehouse. After that, when the order is coming in, those products needs to be put into the boxes, put the bubble around it, pack, pack it up, and then that box has to go in certain direction. And that direction could be 3,000 miles away or 1,000 miles away or 100 miles away. Now, all this, imagine from point to point, and we are talking about possibilities to the race to the power N. Thousands of products and millions of customers and coming in order and at particular time on a particular day, how these machines gonna, now robotics is involved, AI is involved, machine learning is involved, uh, um, you know, machine sensing, the picture processing. Of things, uh, IoT, all of them need to talk to each other. Yeah. Hundreds of things. This gives you a, a basic, basic concept about the AI that how is going to how is this transforming? So I can go on and on, but one one last thing on the AI, I would say that there is a potential, and I agree with Elon that we'll get to a point where humans would ultimately uh, either feel sad, they'll be stressed, they they they will be their mind will be something because everything is going to be done by machine. Once everything is gonna be done by machine, what are you gonna be doing? So that's where the problem comes in. And if that machine doesn't listen to you, because this is inherent ability in you, because when the kids kid come in your life, the very first kid come in your life, and the people who have got the kid, you would, you would realize that you wanna tell the kid, you wanna tell, you do this, don't go near fire, don't do this. I told you to do this, why aren't you doing this? These are the sentences you hear. 
Now imagine that simple sort of experience you want to have with that machine. And if the machine doesn't listen to you, what are you going to do? And that's mm-hmm. where Elon comes in. The reason a uh, machine won't listen to you is not because it has a higher intellect, because a human has a higher intellect. You have to believe this. And I very strongly believe that machine oh. would never, ever have that higher intellect. Now, how can you, uh, uh, you know, use that intellect? The problem is our intellect cannot be passed on. You know, I could pass all of this to you within 10 to 15 minutes if we could uh, link up our minds. Mm-hmm. But the problem is I have to speak those words. I have to move my hand, body language. My lips has to move. And that voice has to, um, you know, uh, uh, uh, that voice has to make some particular sounds which mean something to you in words. And that your mind compute that, okay, this is what the Quran is saying. And then ultimately it takes you about a second or two to comprehend what I'm saying. Excellent. Now all this lag is the problem. So what Elon is saying that if you want to communicate with the machine, because machine is really fast, it can actually look mm-hmm. at me, can actually communicate, it's millions of times faster. So it says your intellect is faster than that, but how can we connect with the machine? And that's where the neural link comes mm-hmm. in. So whoever hasn't heard about the neural link, please Google it. And uh, uh, you'll be amazed that how much uh, progress has been made on the neural link side. So you can come in in some portion of it. You don't have to make the whole product. Just make something. You know, Turkey, I was really impressed. I was so happy when I saw TOG at CES yes. in April. It was, they said in April the car is going to come out. And I looked at the car. It's an amazing car. I mean, literally That's better good. than Tesla. So go to TOG. Sign up with their SDK. Look at the, you know, their software. What, the, what they need from you. You can do hundreds of things for the car. And they... <laughs> Need you guys. So make some module and maybe you'll make millions out of it. So exactly. I'll just give you an example. Sorry, I went on for too long, but this yeah. is amazing. No, this is perfect. I mean, uh, like you said, we have to study Neuralink, look into it, understand it, where it is, and understand the future, expect what we need to do for the future. And like you said, TOG has become a really brand we're proud of. Uh, you know, there were several hundred thousand people who actually entered a lottery out of them who put initial down payment, certain amount of them able to get, but they're going to produce millions of them soon. And uh, like you said, uh, uh, you know, we have to look into it, even these corporates, bigger corporates, what we can add into them, even a small module to grow, like you said. Uh, You know, I, I want to jump into... Jump start Pakistan since it's about jumping, you know. <laughs> Tell us about when did you start jump start Pakistan? I was so impressed to see, you know, being in Islamabad with you, with all these amazing leaders around Pakistan. They all came from every state. Tell me more about what how you thought of jump start Pakistan, how it started, where have you come so far, and where do you want to go with jump start Pakistan? So, Brother Yavis, basically, um, you know, for uh, their time comes in, in anybody's life. Um, and usually we call it a you know, middle life crisis. So that happens to me as well. Um, so usually what happens with the middle life crisis is that uh, some people become religious if they are like kind of secular. Um, if they are religious, they become secular. Uh, if they only have one wife, they go for like second and third. Um, if they have a job, they want to do... Um, you know, business, if they have a business, they want to do a job. So it's that kind of thing. Like they are just fed up with it. Um, so I had too many startups. I was looking into it, but then it wasn't that middle life crisis, but I wanted to do something for Pakistan. It was a payback time. Um, and I thought I could contribute something, uh, but for me, it was everything bigger. So it wasn't something like, okay, let's talk to two startups or three startups, invest in them and talk to them and give them mentor. I wanted to change the whole landscape of the country. And unfortunately, things are going south at this point in time. But um, uh, but for me, it was the whole plan was how you fix the country, how you take it to the next level. Um, Turkey is the great example, but um, Pakistan has a very different dynamics. Uh, and people, Pakistani people are very different. 
they are really different. I mean, no other, um, you know, human being in the world is like Pakistani people. Um, some people, they do not stand in a line um, and people would think like they are, they are not very, um, you know, disciplined. Um, then I would say like, why do they stand in a line in a, in a prayer um, without telling them? Uh, they, and then you want, on, you're able to actually have the discipline. You do have the discipline. If you have the discipline yeah, but, of prayer, you can have the discipline of other things as well, right? So, so the reason, the, the, the way I figured it out, that they can stand in a prayer line because they do not have to stand behind another person. <laughs> because you have to stand side by side. You're equal. So, yeah, yeah, as equal. So they do not stand in a line because they are standing behind another Pakistani. That's the problem. So we are like that. You know, we, I would work with you and I, happily I would stand behind you. But if there is a Pakistani, I probably wouldn't stand behind him. I would say, no, I have to stand at the front. So anyhow, so for me, it was a big challenge that how we deal with this. And so when you are talking about the fixing the country, you are talking about very first thing comes to the mind is the politics. So you said, okay, one person come on the top and we make sure that this person is clean and is very dedicated, clean in his heart. And then ultimately that person would drive the country to a different level. So we saw this example um, in um, Singapore. One person came at the top, fixed the country, and yes. now it's the developed country. One person came at the top in Malaysia, uh, worked for like 20, 30 years, and that country totally changed. One person came up on the top in Turkey um, and then ultimately fixed the whole country. I mean, look at it. Like I was amazed to see the tunnel um, underneath the Bosphorus um, or like other things or the eastern side of the Istanbul. Uh, the last time I saw the eastern side was like, uh, you know, it was a village. Um, so, and now there's like high rises and everything. Anyhow, point is that one person actually have changed things, but in Pakistan, it hasn't worked. So if politics can, and the reason I've told you, they do not stand behind and in politics, you have to stand behind another person. Um, so uh, politics wasn't a way. Another thing was the philanthropy. In philanthropy, Pakistan has a great example. Zibran Khan actually built Cancer hospital is one of the very unique hospital. It's very expensive to treat uh, cancer and it is free of cost for those people who cannot afford it. Um, and it's amazing. There are like now three hospitals now. Um, another example is easy. Pakistan didn't have a good uh, ambulance service. One person actually stood, he, he asked for the money, people gave him the money, trusted him. And Pakistan had a great ambulance service in a private sector as a sure. philanthropic activity. So we could fix problem with the philanthropy. Problem with the philanthropy is you run out of money. Uh, you lose credibility. People stop would give you, giving you the money. Um, people, um, um, you know, don't trust you. A uh, person dies who was trustworthy. And then ultimately the, the whole problem gets unsolved. So the third option was the entrepreneurship. That's the only way through which you can fix any problem of the world in a sustainable way. And the reason you can do that is there is a magic at the end of it. Whatever the service or the product, when you actually sell it, you put a profit. And that profit is the magic because that profit actually makes sure that you are able to pay salaries, you are able to pay um, uh, raw material, you are able to pay for the rent, you are able to pay for all the other expenses. And yet, so this profit actually keeps that cycle keep going. It doesn't stop. And that's how the big, big companies has built themselves. They haven't stopped. It's, it's still running uh, after 50 years. So if that was the solution, I thought how many problems Pakistan has? Um, so we did certain calculation. We said, okay, maybe 500. And you would be amazed that one developing country doesn't have more problem than 500. Try to do any calculation, education, healthcare, all of it, lack of teachers, um, lack of um, healthcare equipment, all of it, write all of it down, you wouldn't be able to cross 500, even if it's Uganda or Ghana. Um, so we said, okay, we couldn't think of it. We multiplied it by three. So we said, okay, 1500 problem. So for us was a very simple thing. Launch 1500 startups or help those 1500 startups who are solving those 1500 problems. And if they, solve those problems in a sustainable way. And if we are able to even solve thousand problems, Pakistan would be a different place altogether because right. the problem would be solved and Absolutely. it would consider our developed nation. 
So that's the jump start. Sorry, I was long, but that's the this gist is of the whole movement. But you have to focus on the ground. This is the philosophy. You went down, and you actually, I've seen you in people coming from different states, representing, and they're proud to be they identify themselves as being part of the community. How did you achieve that, brother? That was amazing. Like so Jamsa Pakistan has connection in every state in Pakistan. So basically what happened was the first five, six years was really tough. So we said, okay, how are we gonna actually identify those startups? So we actually started traveling. So Pakistan has got like five or six major cities like Peshawar, Faisalabad, Rawalpindi, Lahore, Karachi, um, so those cities, obviously, we wanted to actually address. So every three months, we would go in the first year. So we, uh, 2013, uh, we did the event. And the event is basically called Shepherd's Pie, but it's along the lines of Shark Tank. So yes. we identify those people who would be ultimately act as a shepherd. And it's not just about the mentoring. It's also about the angel investment. But at the same time, also mentoring. So you have a skin in the game. But at the same time, you are the one because you have the 15, 20 years of experience raising sure. startups. So be part of that team. So with that, we have like four shepherds sitting and then 10, 12 the startups come from the city, pitch in front of them. So we started going into those cities. We went into smaller cities like Eptabad, Hyderabad, Gujarat, Sialkot, Faisalabad, Gujranwala, Koita, uh, Kohad, all of those. So about 15 cities uh, by... 2017, each year we would keep on adding two, three cities. And that actually helped us build that network. Um, and each city we will go in, we'll, we'll create a chapter. And now, alhamdulillah, we have global chapters also, like from Sydney, Melbourne, London, Bradford, Manchester, Birmingham, um, Riyadh, Jeddah, Dubai, and obviously the US, Houston, uh, LA, Chicago, um, you know, Buffalo, and New York. So, Ankara, and Ankara <laughs> chapters. Of course, Ankara. <laughs> There's going to be many more, by the way. I'm coming soon, inshallah. inshallah. I'll tell you. Okay. Inshallah, brother. This is amazing. I mean, you need to touch people's side. It's all about connecting and then motivating them. But I love the Shepherd's Pie strategy. You know, the way you actually went in a Shark Tank or, you know, a Dragon's Den format and not just put money, but also skin in the game. And that's how it is. You need to put your network and start building them. And the diaspora in Pakistani diaspora in UK and United States is cut for that. You know, uh, we just need to have that stamina and able to sustain it in a trustworthy program. So I know it's gonna grow bigger. It's gonna become much stronger, inshallah, under your leadership. Uh, and uh, I, I want to ask you, do you have any plans, any program this year that you want to invite uh, anyone here or what, what's the plan? What, is it set yet or you going to let us know later for Pakistan? Um, yes. Yes, we are planning uh, the Yavis in, in August. The, the issue with Pakistan, because we were, as you remember, like, uh, you know, from last year, um, yes. we wanted to have like a big our Lift Pakistan event, uh, which is our flagship event. And sure. roughly about like 25 to 30,000 people actually attended. And we have multiple sessions in about 12 sectors. Um, the problem is, is just this political instability in Pakistan right now is um, making things counterproductive. Like it doesn't matter what we do or plan. Um, it doesn't work, work, work out very well. Nonetheless, uh, we are planning to actually have in August. Uh, and I'll okay. share the details with you. Uh, and I would love to have um, you know startups come from Turkey um, and even if you haven't been to Pakistan please do plan to this way you will increase your expo year you would have like another market to explore uh, and uh, brother Yavis for sure I'll share the details with you definitely you have to plan to come and that's uh, uh, happening um, uh, 10th 11th 12th uh, 13th August and the sure. 14th August day is the Independence Day also um, so you will get to see the Independence Day also in Pakistan. So, yeah. That's amazing. And it's a great weather around that. Uh, it's a bit hot, but, uh, um, uh, you know, in Islamabad, it's going to be okay. Inshallah. So I'm starting to look into 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, like almost like a week or so. And then, inshallah, maybe prepare a delegation and see what we can, uh, you know, 
the build prepare and maybe for those who wants to have a separate you know track maybe give some of the ones that you feel comfortable maybe an online track or something and create maybe a online turkish pakistani uh, you know session or something maybe that's something we can consider as well if you want depending on the timing I know it's yeah, yeah, of easy. course, of course, we can have yeah. a very special thing. Maybe like we'll have like a one parallel session run by some of the startups. What ideally I want is to interact, uh, um, get the Pakistani startups to interact with the Turkish startups and uh, and the Turkish you know, investors as yeah. well. We can have also right. a setup of Turkish investors listening to uh, Pakistani startups and and vice versa, and also maybe create some joint ventures between Turkish and Pakistani startups, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. So yeah, there. Uh, I just ask all of you to actually pray that Pakistan. Uh, Alhamdulillah, now the Turkey has got uh, you know very clean um, you know vision and sight for the next five years, um, and inshallah, it's going to excel from this point onwards. Um, I've, uh, I've, the way I've uh, you know been studying the you know geopolitical situation and how the things are evolving in the region, um, I think we have a great um, you know future ahead. And I really hope that Pakistan kind of like settles down in the next four, three, four months. Um, so we both brothers can actually uh, enjoy the journey. Absolutely, inshallah. Brother, uh, you know, uh, I'm also very curious to hear if by surprise, if any startup wants to present here, do you want to listen to them? Uh, do you want to hear their pitches? Just a couple of them, if you have time. Yeah, yeah, of course, uh, brother. Yeah, so I'm, I'm available. So. To get to know and get to know you. Get to know them as well. Maybe I can and, ask. And, uh, and, I'm a Jawai Shunar. Yes. And also, if somebody has a very specific question about the, any particular market, I'm very well aware of the UK market. I'm. Um, uh, I, I live in the US. I can um, uh, tell you about the US market, Pakistani market. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Should, if any particular I question you have, please. Presentations. Maybe we can start de detailing into and entering, discussing the US and Pakistan market in detail as well. Let, just to change the dynamics, let's listen a couple startups and then start diving into US and Pakistan markets. Is that okay, brother? Yes, yes, please, please Excellent. take the lead. Yeah. So uh, brother Ahmed, uh, the floor is yours. Feel free to present uh, to Huram Zubairi, the president of Jamsar Pakistan, your presentation, dear Ahmed. Hello, welcome. My name is Ahmed Cevayetçiler. Today I want to introduce Chorap to you. Chorap is a make money online application. We observed some problems. The first one is accessing people for online tasks. The second is requests for like, comment, click from social media accounts. And the third one is new mobile applications, installation, rating, and comment requests. These problems are related to search engine optimization and app store optimization. And uh, what are the online tasks? Sign up for a website, comment a video, download an application, or retrieve a post. All of them earn money to real people in our application. You can post or make all of these tasks on all active social media platforms. And Chorap is ready to integrate new social media applications in the future. In 2020, in Turkey, $700 million were spent in digital advertising. 70% of Turkish nation use social media, spend three hours every day in social media and have 10 social media accounts. We are active since uh, 11 months and we have more than 55,000 registered members. Advertising agencies, software companies, social media users and agencies are our advertisers. Students, housewives, and people work on the internet and make money online are our taskers. Now, uh, this revenue model is working well. Mostly, we take money from advertiser payments. Uh, and this is the uh, last three quarter economic presentation. Inshallah. And uh, now we have one big competitor in Turkey and in global, one million and base million member, two global competitors. And uh, we develop an automatic control process with artificial intelligence. Now the manual control process takes more than 24 hours. If we do that, uh, the control process only five minutes. We started in July 2022, 
and we developed English version in 2023. We have a strong team and we have need 100,000 uh, US dollars for funds, marketing and staff page. If we get an investment in two years, uh, maybe we have 1 million members and 500,000 turnover. Thanks for listening to me. If you have any question, I want to try answer and feel free to contact me. Thank you. Brother Ahmed, how you got to, in 11 months, you said like it's about 50, over 50,000 people you signed up. Um, how did you uh, reach to them? How did they sign up? In, in, in Play Store and App Store, uh, any person uh, writes Görev Yap Para Kazan in Turkish, make money online application, our application in uh, two and three level, and then the, these real people download application and make these tasks. We don't uh, pay any additional uh, money for digital advertising. Every month, uh, about 5,000 new members we registered because make money online application is a trending topic all of the time. So uh, he basically question... able to, he was able to utilize SEO strategy within App Store and Google Play Store and always rank for the Turkish population, uh, the right keywords, and now from that poured all these 55,000 people. Okay, great. Yeah, I get that. Um, also, Brother Ahmed, if you could actually uh, answer this. So uh, what is the financial model? So, I mean, you are getting the money from the advertisers, but are you passing that on? And what's the percentage of it to the people who are signing up? Yes, uh, we take uh, advertisers, uh, money and give 40 percent to tasker the 60 percent is our uh, money but uh, taxes and uh, operational wages uh, now we we have 25 percent profit for all tasks okay great uh, no it's a it's a great journey and uh, i think it's uh, it's definitely a viable model um for hundred thousand um, dollar, and what sort of equity you are giving away? I don't understand your question, please. The question is very soon. Use bin dollar karşılığında. Now uh, we want to give ten percent of our company for uh, one hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Okay, great. Um, yeah, um, I think you have a model and it's proven, and um, you know, in order to actually get like that many people in eleven months. Uh, I think it's very workable, uh, but the 10 percent. If you are giving, um, I don't know for for similar thing. Is it, it, the, the, you, one last thing? Your yeah, this site. I wanted to actually look at it. Your competitor. Uh, sorry, it's go back to that one. Yeah. So the paid work is your major competitor, right? It's got the five million members. Yes. Okay. And what's their model? Are they giving 40% also? I don't know their models, but uh, we pay uh, the best in Turkey because the other uh, competitors in Turkey pay low prices to Teskers, but uh, we give 40%. Uh, I know one of the, our competitors give only 20%, but we give 40% and we give more money and our Teskers uh, make these tasks very good. Okay, so, thank you, Brother Ahmed. Um, I get that. You, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Chorab, chorab is like their currency, you know, digital currency. Okay. So every task mm -hmm. you do, you make some chorab, and that chorab has actual money uh, conversion, uh, and they make great. money through that. Ahmed, great job. Ahmed is an academician right. in Konya. When you come to Turkey, inshallah, <laughs> if you stop by Konya, you know, the place of Mevlana, Jalal Rumi. Of course, or I have to one day go. Uh, yeah, so, I've been thinking for so long, but uh, just never got around to do so that. So you, yeah, you have inshallah. more reason. He will be showing you around in Konya, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Maybe a couple more presentation, and then we can take a break. But uh, Osman Murat Ivegan from Intap, do you mind doing a presentation for Brother Hura? This is just out of blue, just to see, you know, how they perform and see your feedback, brother. 
sesimizi açalım. Let's turn on the voice. Osman Murat'ı ve gel. Hi. Hi Hürrem. How are you? I'm good. Alhamdulillah. I'm good. Thank you. <gülüyor> Maşallah. Uh, let me... Uh, my name is Osman Murat'ı ve gel. I worked many years for Baxter Healthcare in Turkey. You know, Baxter Healthcare is uh, headquarters in Chicago, Illinois, in Deerfield. I have been many times in Chicago. I love Chicago so much, uh, Round Lake. Uh, I worked 20 years for Baxter Products, a technical service manager, and I faced some problem from the directly from the patient or from the clinic side, etc. And we told this story to Baxter. Baxter is a very huge company, and they are uh, closed their uh, ears. There is no uh, feedback from Baxter. I left, I left the company in 2019. I found a company name is uh, Furix P Medical uh, Innovation. Uh, then uh, we worked on the periton dialysis patient. Periton dialysis patient, uh, every day they fill the fluid from the uh, uh, body uh, and uh, they, there's a fill time, there's a develop time is two hours. After two hours, they drain the fluid from the body. Every day they make five times for this uh, treatment. There's no option, or hemodialysis or periton dialysis. There's a two option for and state renal diseases. Baxter is a world leader for periton dialysis, but uh, we, we faced some problem. The free flow of the uh, water or solution or something, the patient uh, in the school, uh, there's becomes the intraabdominal pressure increased. If the intraabdominal pressure increased, no one knows that. Up to, up to today, no one uh, know about what is the value, real value, exact value intraabdominal pressure. We developed the devices, we applied patent in 2019, for a small devices, name is Intap. This is a this is a, a check every second to interabdominal pressure between the catheter and transfer set. Very small device. We adapt the pressure transducer. We adapt the devices. Patent pending, and they are, every every second they are changed. When the value reach the clinical preclinical value, uh, uh, alarm level, the, the device alarm the patient. There's a vibration or sound. You, your intraabdominal pressure is high. What's what's going on if we don't control? The intraabdominal pressure is high. The normal body uh, body blood pressure is high. Blood pressure is high. The the uh, the effect the heart attack. So many patients, many periton dialysis patients died for the heart attack or high blood pressure. For for especially for kids, this is very important because because the kids intraabdominal pressure changes very frequently and very fast. Uh, this, this is we we we got the we applied patented we sell uh, we told our idea to uh, two professor one is the from France the other is from Turkey they are the professor for pediatric nephrology nephrologist they, they are said this is a good product you have to do this uh, and we uh, we get a Twitter uh, support hundred percent from Turkey we finished the, uh, our uh, sample uh, this is the TRL uh, six level now uh, we we need the uh, financial. Uh, uh, shareholder for uh, get a CE mark and FTA mark. If you get a CE mark and FTA mark, then we are uh, start to sell our devices. We found that some, one company is the access to healthcare name in the uh, Singapore. Uh, they told us that if you get a CE mark, we ready to sell your devices in the uh, this forest area in five countries, in Malaysia, Indonesia, like that. We, we, we come at this point. Uh, so the, our products is... Uh, uh, uh, send, uh, showed the uh, European peritoneal dialysis patient uh, congregation, nephrological congregation for pediatrics in last year. Uh, this is the professor. Uh, she told uh, she told about the, our devices and we, we, she told us very good feedback. Uh, we, she collect very good feedback and somebody based our devices, but we cannot sell because you you, you know this FTA and uh, CMA to get uh, both of them is not easy, uh, costly. Uh, financially, uh, we. Let me say, uh, financial. The, the intap is cost of when we get a CE mark after after two years, uh, return of investment is done, and five years later maybe we can multiply three, four, or five times uh, in USD dollar. Uh, it becomes a uh, it's a good project. Let me say, uh, our uh, pers uh, our uh, target is reach the uh, one percent of the total global patient each year. One percent is. 4,000 machine and 60,000, that's a good, good money. Uh, and our uh, last target is get the 14.4% in the global hepatitis the dialysis patient. We reach this at the month. This is, uh, about, uh, is a, this is a very uh, low cost, high price devices. So high effect is, so patron dialysis itself is a high cost. So it's a simple, very small portion of the whole total uh, treatment, but it's a good, it's needed. 
that's that's all about <laughs> I told you that uh, yes, yes. I need I need uh, hundred and ten thousand dollar for uh, nine percent or eight or nine percent of the uh, company. Uh, we we use this money all to get only for, only get for CE mark. Uh, then the, the making the device or something is not so expensive. These are uh, cheap devices to manufacture. Uh, and we have a, we have in pipeline we have two more projects. And if you make a share a shareholder, you also uh, share the other our other products. Thank you very much. If you need to contact with me, this is my name. This is my uh, communication telephone. Thank you very much. Excellent job, Osman Bey. Great presentation. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Medical technology is extremely important, and having such an immense, you know, experience in Baxter, and then building solutions for you know and renal CH patients in uh, kidney disease is very valuable. Uh, I think the money you're asking is very, very reasonable as well. I'm, I'm very curious to hear Huram's uh, comments. Brother Usman, have you already gone ahead and applied for the FDA yet? Have you tried to process it yourself or no? No, no. And why is that? Uh, financial support to FDA because you, you pay the FDA. First of all, I want to get a CE mark, for example. For CE mark, we need the clinical trials. For clinical trials, you need a $60,000, etc. because you pay the insurance of the patient. So step by step, get the CE mark, then FDA. But but I, I am open if you, if somebody help us to get an FDA and if we can enter the state market because in states, 50,000 patients in states. Also, let me market. understand... Yeah, also let me understand the procedure. I mean, this is not the bloodless dialysis. This is actually the dialysis machine, correct? So is it with me? You e, e, e, e, dialysis e, makinası diyor. Kansız dializ değil değil mi? Bu dializ nasıl bir dializ diye soruyor. Peton, peton dialysis. Peritoneal dialysis. Peritoneal dialysis. dialysis. So, from peritone, peritone from yeah. okay. abdomen. And, yeah. and is, is this something which the person can actually do that at home or this is something? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yes. And what, what's your uh, ticket size? Like, uh, I mean, in terms of the actual pricing, retail pricing you have in mind that for this machine? Uh, Yanlış cevap vermiyor Osman Bey. Ne, ne, ne, ne kadar satmak istiyorsun diyor bu cihazı Amerika'da. Onu da, onu da şey yapmadım ama 300 dolar or 400 dolar device. Oh and really? Device used, device used very simple pressure sensor. Sensor is 20 dolar but used one week. One week lifetime. Okay, so um, the only thing you have to actually, you know, keep using it is to actually get the refills. Um, now, um, this is very good price, like if you're thinking about $300 mark. Um, and um, wh wh where the manufacturing is going to be happening? Let's say you have this, you know, now if you got the CE NFD. Manufacturing, uh, if, if, you, if I get the CE mark due to CE procedure, you can manufacture in the CE mark, which is, where is the location? For example, if I get a CE mark in Istanbul, I have to locate, I have to manufacture in Istanbul. If I get a CE mark in Ankara, I have to manufacture in Ankara because in CE mark, the old area are uh, checking from the CE uh, people. It, when you and, get a CE mark, there's, there's a facility to get CE mark. Okay, so you for, can for do that- in the United States also. I, I, I get that. So let's say you get the CE and FDA and all that. Um, What's going to happen after that? Let's say you are you have exhausted hundred ten thousand dollars, which you have raised. Um, obviously, you're going to need tons of money uh, in order to actually produce one first one thousand. Uh, what what do you have a plan for it? Uh, for example, uh, our our target is first year target. First year target is two hundred fifty machine. Two hundred fifty machines first target. We have a capacity because there's small devices. We have a capacity to make a two hundred first device in one month in our facility. This is not a complicated, so much complicated. The idea is good and make it, the, the software is small because you just enter the software and put the devices. It's not so big deal, let me say. We can do this in one okay. month or two months. And finally, I mean, how many um, people have actually humanly tested it, this device? How many people, how many people use this uh, treatment? 500,000. How many? No, how many people have used your device, like as a pilot? Have they? No, have, no, has no. any person? No, because no. if you get a, if you get a clinical trials, you cannot use it. You, you need a clinical trials. I, I I know. It's forbidden. But, it's forbidden. But, 
<laughs> but usually you have got the guinea pigs, like you know, like especially in third world sometimes. No, I cannot do okay. this. Okay, okay. No, I just wanted to be absolutely sure about that. But thank. No, but this is uh, this is amazing. Actually, I'm a, a friend of mine who's uh, who's doing the similar sort of thing. He's based uh, out of Pakistan, but he's uh, recently moved back to uh, here in the U.S. And they they have a great journey. Also, they had similar sort of uh, you know issues. I would. Uh, uh, we should like, connect. Would love to actually, yeah, I would. I would love to actually connect you with them. Um, they are working on a very unique uh, technology because their process is bloodless. And I was uh, for the very first time when I actually heard that, I was really surprised that you were talking about dialysis. I mean, dialysis is all about transfusion you know, of blood. It's not how could how, can it be like a bloodless? Um, but then I looked at it, and um, but anyhow, I, I'll definitely put you in touch with them. Uh, Brother Yavis, uh, please remind me, and then inshallah, I'll uh, uh, pass on the numbers. With, uh, with Absolutely. Yeah. Shikran, thank you. Uh, Excellent job. And, Bilal and, also, and yes. also, this guy would be able to actually help you with this uh, certification also for the FDA. And, wow. And the thank you very much. This is amazing. Thank we you. have a match. Excellent. That's amazing. <laughs> Welcome Shikran. to United States, Osman Murat Ivegan. <laughs> I love you guys so much. <laughs> thank you. Bilal Uzunkaya, go help the nation. Yes, hello. Um, let me share my screen. Sure. Okay. Yeah, can you see? Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. Uh, we are a um, software company and our product is Go Health Nation for health tourism um, CRM platform. Uh, we use this platform for ho hospitals, clinics, and health tourism agents. Who are we? We are a big team. Uh, we supported by some uh, experienced health tourism consultants and high skilled software developers. What is the problem? Uh, in the uh, health tourism sector, we have some uh, operational problems, they are mixed and big prob problematic and high costs, overtime works, contact problems and performance problems. What's our, what is our solution? Uh, we have our main uh, CRM platform, which is also uh, <clears throat> supply uh, web base. Uh, for the health tourism companies and hospitals and clinics, sustainability and automation with AI support, uh, also high performance and efficiency with simplicity, and it is user friendly. Um, with this CRM, uh, our specialties are field personal management. You can manage your personal in the field. Uh, by mobile application supports, Android and iOS. Uh, you can also uh, check the process uh, about patients, hospital and hotels and other stuff. And other specialties also, we have auto application system. Uh, we can uh, automatically send the price offers to the uh, uh, potential patients from all over the world and a safe video conference with AI support. This conference, video conference system uh, developed by our uh, software engineers and it is safe. And after the conference, uh, we uh, give the uh, uh, meeting notes by AI supporting to the uh, patients and also a doctor uh, as a report. And also uh, you can manage the process easily. Uh, patients, hospital, hotel transfers, all the uh, different parties in the uh, health tourism operation. Uh, about the market, uh, health tourism sector in Turkey, uh, in 2019, it was more than $1 billion. 
Now in 2023, it is more than $3 billion. Uh, according to globally, uh, health tourism is in 2023, uh, it is more than 130 billion US dollars. And every year it is uh, increasing crazy. And uh, about the healthcare CRM market, which is our market, uh, it is in 2023, uh, 15 billion dollars. So uh, our business model is uh, monthly and yearly membership for our B2B customers. And also we have uh, advertising incomes. Uh, according to our uh, plan, we are going to have more than 400 thousand US dollars income uh, at the end of this year. What are the differences between us and other brands? There are lots of different global CRM uh, applications like Zoho, HubSpot, Zendesk, and also one Turkish uh, brand here. Uh, <clears throat> we choose Blue Ocean strategy to differentiate other brands. For example, we have a social media management from one place uh, for all accounts. You can manage your landing page, websites, social media platforms, WhatsApp accounts, everything on this CRM platform. And we also uh, AI supports in this CRM. And we have our only online video conference and also mobile application supports and also we have a proper uh, price offer for our customers and um, about our roadmap business roadmap in 2023 we uh, we are going to have more than 100 members in this year and we want to get proceed investments as a, a 750 us dollar in 2023, we want to invest in our technology to get better and also increase our members. And <clears throat> at the end of the uh, uh, 2024, 20, uh, we want to get like 100 million Turkish Liras investments and increase our members uh, more than 10,000 uh, members. So uh, for now, we have 80% uh, uh, profitability. And uh, according to our third quarter uh, numbers and statistics, uh, we have, um, we have uh, fixed expenses as uh, developer wages and some <clears throat> advertising expenses. And uh, as a uh, as a in, uh, profit, monthly profit, uh, it is something like more than sixty thousand US dollars for now. Thank you for listening. If you have any question, I can answer. Thank you, Bilal. You're welcome. It was uh, pretty straightforward. Um, how many users do you have so far at this point? We have uh, seven users now in Turkish health tourism markets. Uh, there are some hospitals and uh, health tourism agents. And roughly, um, you know, those each hospital, how many, I mean, how many patients we are talking about? So roughly number of patients altogether, how many? Uh, the patients of this, uh, users, you mean? Yeah, users. users. Uh, for example, one of our uh, users is an uh, agent in Antalya, and they have uh, monthly more than 100 uh, patients every month. And their, okay. their, their monthly uh, advertising budget is more than 500 uh, 
500,000 Turkish liras. And um, where uh, are you storing? Is it is it on the cloud? Uh, all the data yes. and the software? Yes. Stuff? Yeah. yes, it is on the cloud. Do you, do, do you also deploy somewhere? If somebody actually requests you to deploy on the premises, do you do that also? Or no, just, just here's the login ID. Is yeah, yeah. Cloud? Just, just login IT, and we have uh, servers uh, uh, to uh, to make their own websites and their own um, video conference uh, saves. You mean? I mean. All right. Okay. Yeah, it's it's fairly simple. Um, I I understand the model. Like actually. Um, this is for the healthcare, but uh, you know we have another startup who's in our group. Um, that's uh, theirs is LMS and pretty much the same model. Um, but I would say one thing: just uh, you know, as uh, do you do you does your plan actually include that you're going to be actually operating outside Turkey or yes. you're going to be offering it? Yeah, of okay. course, of course, we are planning to be a global brand uh, because uh, Turkey is. Uh, yes, Turkey is very popular uh, in health tourism, but uh, in USA is uh, the first uh, globally market in this sector. So we are uh, our uh, aiming. We are aiming to get uh, customers in U.S. markets and uh, also South America markets because also health tourism is also very popular in South. America as well. So, so what about the GDPR kind of thing, and then HIPAA and all that? Like, I mean, that's already been taken care of. Or you keep yes. that in mind, or yes, of course, it is our uh, red lines. Okay, so yeah. that's that's already been taken into account while yeah. while you are operating in Turkey. So that's great. Of course, uh, no, mashallah. I mean, great journey, and I think uh, what the revenues you're saying, um, I think it's just about scaling. And uh, as long as you don't cut corners, because it's really, really um, kind of like very touchy uh, domain. Um, it's very scary sometimes, um, especially with the healthcare data. Is it more? Uh, it has to be more secure than the, even the financial data. So you are you are you are hundred percent right. I agree with you. So we are supported now. We are accredited by. Turkish Health Ministry now as a healthcare CRM platform. So uh, as we get this uh, accreditation from Turkish Health Ministry, we are going to get all the countries uh, countries uh, ministry accreditation as well. This is our nice. red nice. lines. Yeah. Well, very nice. Um, congratulations and. Uh... Thank you. Uh, thank you, Brother Yavis, You're for welcome. connecting with Brother Bula. Thank you. And where, wherever I would see the opportunity, inshallah, I'll, I'll mention to Brother Yavis. Inshallah. To, inshallah. inshallah. inshallah. I, as, far, uh, as soon as possible, I want to meet you, uh, meet you as well. Thank you. Brother Gulam, uh, we have maybe six more presenters, but do you want to take a break maybe for 10, 15 minutes, or do you want to listen to them and finish? What do you prefer? You tell me uh, how I'm you okay. Want to... I'm I'm okay. okay. Whatever. Then let's continue with Birsan Sotel. Birsan, uh, if you're available, you're welcome to present. Hello, hazırlanıyorum hocam. Saniye. Thank you so much. Hazırlanıyorum hocam. Ben duyuyor musunuz hocam? Yes, we can hear you. Biraz daha uzun süre, sürecekse bir sonraki kişiye geçeyim. Eğer Hello. müsaade. Yes. How are you? How are you, Karim? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. How about yourself? Thank you. Uh, I'm project uh, her, uh, medicine, herbal plants and uh, natural cosmetics. Uh, I'm, my name is Birsan Satıl. I'm the founder of Sales and Cosmetics with the Birsan Cosmetics Sustain, uh, Sustainability Project in order to reduce the carbon footprint 
he want to obtain high innovation products. If you ask what are these products, these are medical herbal oils, powder mixers, ointments, natural cosmetics, capsules, eczema, psoriasis, and I, uh, joint problems. Uh, problems we find solutions to ailments such as skin problems we are one click ahead of other competitors with our experts clients by solving them my clients professor doctor uh, medical my herbalist my specialist veterinarian uh, my pharmacist my pharmacist uh, reading of alternative medicine my chemical engineer my chemical engineers expert laboratory researchers the fact that the food engineer and my research and development studies on which I have done for many years were positive and the positive feedback from the users and coaches me to do this job. We have a wide variety in agriculture with a very rich variety. So it is in fruit and vegetables. Then we can relate decide wastes of these products and turn them into products with high added value and uh, with this we will provide maximum benefit with minimum budget different herbal products people turn to herbal products after the pandemic and all age groups started to consume them. We care about making personal products. We add awareness and value to the person in this way. Women consume close to three kilograms of cosmetic per year. Men have started to consume them now. This sector is a profitable sector in the short and long term with high returns. So, uh, so we are one of the, our companions in the cosmetic sector. We consider our company technological. We want to strengthen it and move it globally. Uh, we are considering giving a 10 person share to the investor. John Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, are you already selling somewhere? Hocam, biraz... Yerde satış yapıyor musunuz? Şu an satışınız evet, var mı diye söyleyeyim. Kendi sosyal medyamdan. Yes, she is selling through her own social media uh, sites. She, is, she has actual sales now. Um, and where, where are those sales? Like just in Turkey or like uh, elsewhere too? Sadece Türkiye'de mi satış var şu an? Yurt dışında evet, satış var mı? Yes, uh, I, uh, yeni bir şirketim daha doğrusu. She's a new company. She has sales now in Turkey, but she wants to open global as well. Have you have you opened an Amazon account yet? Or no? Amazon hesabınız var mı? Hayır, hayır, çok yeniyim. Daha yeni, yani e, depremden etkilendiğim için böyle bir şey yapamadım. Böyle bir hiç global olarak rastladım. Çok şükür çok iyi bir yere rastladım ve yeni bir yeni böyle toplanıyorum. İnşallah bundan sonra. She was, sonra she was impacted by the earthquake, so she started now just with this rich global program the very first time and she really wants to open an amazon account and go glow grow slowly and utilize rich global program at Bina. but she just started like a couple weeks ago um brother Yavis, can you actually pass my number to her and uh, okay can can she actually send me all the product the pictures of all the products okay. and i might need the samples for it of course so and I'll, I'll tell her, uh, but my recommendation would be, this is something which she can, um, she can really make good money also like grow the business, uh, sure. but do that initially with the Amazon. Uh, okay. That's the cheapest way to actually launch it. Um, mm -hmm. And then gradually you build the, on your website and slowly move towards like more SEO and all that. But uh, I think it's very simple. And then grow, gradually build your own um, store on Amazon. And straight away, you will start to get the money back. And that's the good sure. thing. So you don't need the big chunk of it uh, for the manufacturing. Uh, but I need to see the product, how it's been designed. Um, is, the, is the healthcare wise, is, is, is like all the 30 ingredients and everything is there. Sure. And uh, what's the packing okay. material and how does it look? And so, yeah. Of course. Kendisi, Ürem Bey, size telefonunuzu ben vereceğim. Ürem Bey'e de sizin numaranızı vereceğim. 
ürünlerinizin e, kataloglarını, içeriğini ve hatta bazı örnekler de olabilir. Amazon bunun en hızlı, en kolay başlangıç yoludur. Çok büyük masraf olmadan. Burada da size destek olacak, gönlünüzü açacak. Ama burada içeriği ve kalitesini, her şeyi görmesi lazım. Evet, tabii ki, tabii ki. Çok teşekkürler. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm Thank giving you. the management to my brother Gökhan Birlik, who is the coordinator of Bina. I'll pay Marip and come back. Our next presenter is Bilgin Yazar Bedubax, a very popular brother. Uh, Gökhan Bey söz sizde. And uh, Bilgin Yazar Bedubax, you're welcome to present if you're here. I'll be. I'll go to prayer and I'll be right back, inshallah. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Ram. Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing? Yeah, thank you very much. And you? Thank you. I'm good. I'm good. So, thank you. Should I continue? Okay. Yeah, sure. Please go ahead. Thank you. Arkadaşlar, sırada kim vardı? Who is the next one? Bilgin Bey, sonra Nesri Hanım var galiba. Bilgin ve Nesri, evet. Yeah. Yes, yes, I am here. Okay, could you please start, Miss Ness? Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, unfortunately, I couldn't um, uh, connect my screen. Can I explain my project without the uh, presentation, please? Is it possible, Mr. Yeah, sure. I mean, the last one oh, okay. was without the presentation Salam anyway, so please go. Yes. Salam okay. alaikum, Mr. Kuram. Wa alaikum, salam wa rahmatullah. Yeah, uh, my name is Nesin Al Hasan, and I am a Syrian uh, citizen. I'm a graphic mm -hmm. designer. Uh, my project is uh, designing and printing on a t-shirt. First, I buy a t-shirt without designing uh, from the swing uh, workshop. Then I add my uh, designing, my design, and branding to it. Mm -hmm. uh, how did I start it or how, um, uh, what prompted me to start this project? Uh, in my city, we had a youth. We had a problem that we couldn't find a printer printing on a cotton shirts. Um, they just were, uh, were um, printing in uh, on a um, kind of uh, fabrics. Yeah, and I started it. Uh, first, I started uh, selling uh, as a B2C. Now I'm trying to uh, sell um, B2B. Uh, my, um, now I had, uh, um, I don't have a strategy of selling abroad. As you know, they buy goods or products uh, from a large factories, uh, so they buy the, them at a lower price. Uh, and I buy uh, smaller quantities, uh, so I cannot uh, put the same price. Mm, and um, and I aspire and work uh, my brand to be international brand and export the t-shirt abroad. Uh, of course, I target, uh, target the youth uh, group. And I'm working to, um, to sell on uh, Amazon FBA. Uh, last year, I was uh, trying to buy uh, on Amazon by um, merch by Amazon. Yeah, not FBA. I had a problem because uh, of I'm a Syrian citizen and I'm refugee. Uh, this is my uh, project. Uh, thank you for uh, for giving me a chance to, to explain my project without presentation. Not a problem. So uh, I think this is a very saturated market. Um, you know, every everybody is doing it. Like many people do it. And this is something which anybody can do from home. All they need is a printer and, um, you know, just press it and just get the best t-shirts and do it. Uh, now I, I have a company. It's mm -hmm. a smaller, but a company. It's not about the company or not, but I'm, I'm, I'm just giving you a scenario that this is, this is something uh, which you'll be able to actually make some quick cash uh, over the time. Mm -hmm. But this is not some business which you can scale over longer period of time. Um, if you want to launch something, then ultimately you would have to actually, um, I don't know what you have in mind. Uh, you, can, you can keep doing that for a year or two, um, but ultimately you have a very short margin in it. Uh, I don't know what's this like in Turkey or which country you are in right now. Pardon, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't. I couldn't hear Which, you. Are you in Turkey or are you in some other country? I'm in Turkey now. I'm in Turkey now. Oh, okay. So, um, 
you know, usually what happens is like when you are talking about B2B, then ultimately you'll be able to actually get some orders uh, from the client, which is going to say like, okay, do me a 50 shirt, do me a 25 shirt. Um, and then it's the same design usually. Now the margins, um, I think it's going to be, you know, a couple of dollars. Uh, uh, um, I mean, you can convert that into Lira, but there's not much margin. I mean, there's going to be just one person salary you can cover. And if you are working yourself, you can be just like, you know, paying off your to yourself. Um, so um, if, if this is something you're going to be doing in the long run, um, then have a vision that, you know, this is not something I'm going to be doing, but I'm going to be actually doing many other things. Um, some ad uh, go into different product line, add something with it, well, like some jewelry, some uh, other material, some like, um, you know, uh, you know, shorts or some other kind of like hoodies, for instance. Um, and then ultimately you would go in your own brand. So launch your own brand. Um, and then for that, like you're probably going to need a lot of money, but you're going to over the time, like a year or two, you can um, sort of learn that and then come into the fashion where probably the youngsters like some kind of like a special hoodie, design it. Uh, people like some special like a t-shirt, which has a, like a very unique design. Um, so go in that direction. That would be my recommendation. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me and giving me this chance to explain my project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Ms. Nesrin. So next one now, uh, Mr. Bayram Berk. Project name is uh, AppWest. Uh, hello, everyone. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, so she thanks to she for the uh, opportunity to she present my work. Uh, let me say my screen quickly. Uh, I'm not going to all over the say, presentation, but I just say, want to solve the uh, important parts and then solve a, a quick demo of the product. Uh, AppBest is an intelligent manufacturing uh, say, platform and uh, we uh, aim the vertical of online manufacturing in, in global market. Uh, actually, we see a, a three problem and we solve the three problem. Uh, the, the manufacturing is time consuming. Uh, the quality of manufacturing in Turkey is lacking and the, the Turkish based uh, manufacturers hate to do ship prototyping uh, in their machines. So we just solved this problem with the online platform, a huge manufacturing network and the quality hubs right now we have a one quality hub in in an anchor and uh, say 20 plus manufacturers network which makes a to say more than 200 machines for us see future networks also be we provide a easy to use and say user friendly online platform which offers instant coding uh, a market pro say platform and uh, at the back end we have a statistical pairing which works with the neural network to separate uh, the part with the manufacturers so uh, the idea behind this is that so we know that every, every manufacturer they cannot do every part so we have to find a perfect fit for that part uh, say with the suitable manufacturer so that the result will be uh, enough for the customers uh, the system is several say, work as that say so you have your td file you upload your td file say so you select your properties and then you give your orders the neural network will pay your orders. The, the machining is done after uh, the parties come to us. Say, quality hub. Say, we uh, say double check the quality and say, ship the part to you. Uh, actually, the, the system is up now. Uh, say, you can up upload your part. Say, say, you can select anything you want. Say want, uh, say from the to, say tolerance to quality control needs uh, and extra tapping needs, uh, 
and the product sometime uh, at that say so you just add your list and check out say give your orders select the shipment and and then our uh, neural network and the quality team will uh, say do the rest uh, say for now i just want to introduce this much and if you have any any question uh, i'm happy to answer say answer it say say with edi additional slides no oh, this is really good this is uh, definitely i really like it um I'm not into like uh, you know the tooling myself, but I understand the market, and I think uh, uh, what you have started has got the great potential. Although the market size is not that big, but if you even get like one or two clients, I think um, the, the, this, their business is going to be a huge. Yeah, um, yeah. And and uh, as I said, like the, I mean, the future, the robotics is going to be ultimately the. Um, driving engine for all the assembly and everything, uh, pretty much. So that's where this this comes in really handy. That if somebody wants to actually yeah. work on some machine, then they can actually do that. But so it has a great potential. It's just, uh, and this is not something that you have to worry about. That you know maybe somebody is going to take over or they are a major competitor and all that. Uh, even if you grow this gradually. Uh, I don't think there's many people going to be actually looking into it. And so at some point in time, you can actually bring in the AI engine into this. Uh, actually, we have the, the AI, and say we oh, just oh. say uh, say delete the AI because uh, our say competitors use AI, and we uh, actually see you know the X-ray, right? When the XA found everyone tried to use XA, it, it, even the popcorns are, are named uh, after XA. So we think that AI is in the same situation with the XA. Not everything needs AI to work with. Say, you can do neural network. You can say use three function. You can use statistical pairing, and which give a more repetitive results for every order and every part. When you use AI, actually we have AI which checks the simulator and when you use the AI for the whole thing, every time someone uploaded a part, the price will be changed because AI will say use a pool to give that price and every time that pool will increase or uh, as volume and the price will change. So we do not want that because in manufacturing, uh, the price have to be fit and always steady over time. So we just say reduce the AI to our backend. Say we just check the results of the AI. Uh, say which is suitable with the price given from the say mathematical formulation. Sounds good. Sounds good. No, it's a great thing. Um, I don't have much to add here. Uh, but thank uh, you really good yeah. thank, thank you, you so thank much you. Uram. thank you uh, is uh, Bilgin Yazar on here Bilgin if yes, you can turn uh, on your yes. yes Bilgin the floor is yours you're welcome to present Huram Zuberi is the you're joining from Chicago he is my great friend he is the president of Jumpstart Pakistan one of the biggest entrepreneurial organizations and you're welcome to present dear Bilgin uh, hello, uh, everybody. Uh, good evening. Uh, uh, let me open our uh, teaser and uh, do not take uh, too much time with the pitch tag. Uh, let me check. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, here. Okay. Uh, Petrobox is an um, B2B SaaS solution, volume one uh, learning management system. And um, it includes uh, many uh, uh, modules inside. So it helps corporate or training centers, courses, and many other uh, customers from different industries, uh, industries to establish their online platform for customer training, employee training, uh, product training, uh, and also for the schools and the uh, courses, the cases, you know, establishing online uh, 
uh, learning management system for managing uh, their courses. Uh, we have uh, our product is really mature, uh, uh, nearly 10 years, and uh, uh, growing very well. Uh, actually, we performed uh, very good success in the pandemic. Uh, we haven't get any investment from anybody, uh, just bootstrapping, and uh, we projected our uh, revenue and the growth in, in uh, for the next five years and to reach at least ten million dollar revenue. Uh, so uh, we are very very different than the products in the market. To develop a product look like Bedubox learning management system, you need to spend at least five years. And also, in unit extra five years to improve the product and to, uh, actually uh, match the customer needs. Uh, if you want, I can show you a little bit uh, about our simulation. Uh, uh, you see, any customer can create their uh, landing page, web page, look like this within the our web maker tool inside the Vedo box. Then, uh, easy, uh, you can switch to login page. And then uh, you can customize the page according to your color and the, everything you uh, can de decide. Then you ca can jump to the, our landing page, uh, uh, uh, sorry, our dashboard. Uh, the dashboard is uh, allows uh, co company portal and social learning look like Facebook and LinkedIn. You see the news feed, gamification, everything in the system. And then also create courses look like Udemy. And then uh, you can adjust your learning path, adding any presentations, you know, uh, documents, videos, and then adding, uh, you know, questions or uh, quizzes inside. And also our system is natively integrated with Zoom, WebEx, Google Meet. And uh, you can uh, easily uh, schedule your live sessions, meetings, webinars, live lessons, uh, et cetera. Uh, we, are, we also developed an event modules that uh, you can e e easily, uh, you know, uh, create your events here and uh, get the registration, you know. Uh, and also uh, the system has very comprehensive question bank, uh, quiz and the exam uh, inside. Uh, so any customer easily create their exam uh, with uh, many different type of. And for the uh, companies who would like to introduce their product to their customers or resellers in the system, they have a products module that's easily integrated with e-commerce sites to sell uh, their products, you know. Uh, but uh, inside the system, we have a marketplace. So each customer can create if they need their Udemy and then th they can uh, sell their uh, courses or subscription. Uh, there are many, many other features inside the system, and it is really easy to use. It delivers to customer within seconds, and it is really mature. And we have customers from different industries, for instance, real estate customers, Remax, Cotwell Banker, using our system. Many software companies using our system for reseller or customer training. And also, uh, we are giving service to the seven uh, uh, aviation courses in Turkey and the largest core training centers also in Turkey using our system. We have also medicine companies. Uh, we have customers both in Turkey and abroad uh, in UK, Germany uh, and uh, Turkey, Malaysia, we have customers. And we have also customers, but the users from different uh, of the world. Uh, for instance, uh, we are giving services NATO and from uh, 65 countries, soldiers connected to the system and use it. Our system, by the way, is multi-language, supporting both Turkish, Russian, Japanese, Arabic, English, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so that's all uh, from my side. Thank you, Bilgen. Great presentation. I know you're doing a great job, uh, Furam. Any any questions? Any comments? Any recommendations? Yeah, how is it different from like any other website making kind of like a dashboard? Uh, style website like Wix or like if you go for the e-commerce then Shopify. Uh, I mean, what what extra are you offering? 
Uh, we are not a website maker. Uh, we, our job is learning management system, LMS. Uh, this is uh, known as LMS in, uh, you know, uh, in, in the sector, you know. Uh, so there are uh, uh, vendors of LMS uh, in different countries, but when you come to Turkey, there are, you can find at least two or three. If you go to the Malaysia, there are almost two or three uh, companies performing learning management system. But uh, in our system, we added a web maker tool, which allows uh, our customers to create their website. Suppose that uh, uh, uh, you have a, a software company and you would like to perform your the, the customer training, employee training, and reseller training. You need an uh, you know online portal which perform uh, uh, this kind of training activities inside the system. Uh, for that reason, uh, we allow you, you to create your courses training in the system, assign the user, get the reports, uh, and perform the analytics. Apart from that, we are uh, providing many tools to create content, for instance, interactive video tool, uh, that you can upload your video and then put the questions inside the video in the seconds and allows uh, user progress more secure, you know. Apart from that, our system allows you to schedule live sessions, uh, meetings uh, with Zoom or Google Meet and the WebEx as, and something else. You can also uh, put questions uh, or quizzes or exams inside the system. And uh, you can also uh, issue certificate that you can also design certificate inside the system. So Vedubox actually many software in a single box. We developed many products and put into the box and uh, provide to the customers to create their online presence, you know, mainly training activities with their customers, resellers, or uh, their employees. On the, this is corporate side, uh, you know, government side. On the other side, there are education side. There's Alo. Alo, training Hanım, centers, uh, uh, training centers and the schools. Uh, but we don't uh, prefer to give the services to universities. Instead, we are pref uh, preferring uh, continuing education centers, lifelong learnings, look like to, uh, you know, provide uh, courses or training centers. So uh, we are not a web maker company. We are a vendor of learning management system. Uh, you can find around uh, uh, the, the very good companies that 10 or 20, you know, between uh, 10 to 20 in the world, uh, well-known companies. Uh, some of them in Nasdaq, for instance, Do Dojebo uh, from Italian, uh, then moved to Canada, currently is a Nasdaq company uh, performing such kind of business, you know. No, basically what happened was because your presentation more sort of like a focus in terms of like, okay, this option is there, that option is there, and that's how you can generate it. So my understanding was that it is something along those lines, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen the, the more functionality of the LMS in the actual presentation. So that's why I was like, uh, kind of yeah. not grasp it. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, I cannot comment on the LMS part because I, I simply could not uh, see it. Um, but there's one uh, person like in our circle um, who has very successfully, but he actually works with the universities. So I don't know what's, what's your plan. Maybe you, you guys would be able to actually learn from each other. Uh, some experiences and all that, so I can connect you with him. Uh, but he's, uh, uh, his whole journey is in front of me. Like, I mean, he was one of the actual uh, founding person, like while we were conceiving the idea of Jumpstart. Um, and since then, it's been about 10 years, 10, 11 years that he was working on this product and ultimately it got the traction that uh, he was able to actually deploy it to many universities in Pakistan. And um, it's been very successful. So I can, yeah. Like no problem. I'll help. I'll help you connect each other, brother Huram. Uh, that's great. Begin is also working in this area for a long time. He has very different clients from all over the world. So, uh, of course, we need to, uh, you know, fine tune him uh, the way he presents and things like that. If you say you are doing too many things, the investor is kind of uh, uh, not focused. So I do understand your point, but uh, that's the whole idea of this uh, Bridge Global too coach and grow, help support their growth, inshallah. Thank you for your valuable input. Begin any comments before closing? 
Uh, many thanks. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, as you know, uh, uh, our customers really like our product because they we really pay attention to customers and then solve their uh, problems and then we consider their future adding AI and the many the, you know useful tools inside. And we are performing very well, I think, in the futures and we really compete any company, uh, any vendor in the world easily. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, did NS Ganesh present at MaxScope already? Yeah, I'm here, but uh, actually, if it's, it's possible, I want to use my time with asking some specific questions. Of course, to Mr. whatever Crum. you prefer. Whatever okay, is thank your you. Time. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Kram, actually, I was in Pakistan in this January, and I liked your country. I want to say this first, especially your foods, very spicy and very similar to our cuisine, you know. And uh, approach to Pakistani people when I say that I came from Turkey, it was a great experience actually. My question is, uh, my startup is working on uh, medical technologies, but uh, it can easily broaden by, by uh, some similar industries like health tourism. As you know that Turkey is uh, increasing uh, health tourism volume by each day. So um, I want to learn that. Uh, the approach in Pakistan, I mean, uh, in, in past, in 15 years ago, when uh, people get sick with some uh, chronic disease or some, you know, cancer or something, some important disease, some deathful disease, they, uh, if they have money, they uh, can go to uh, United States or European uh, countries because um, Turkey was at the dead end, you know, for some diseases. Uh, I want to learn that if it if it's common uh, thing in Pakistan and uh, I mean pe Pakistani people uh, prefer to go with any West countries for their treatment if they have money or uh, is it similar uh, common approach or what are you doing in your country with some diseases but some uh, deathful diseases I want to learn that. I think I would just give you a general answer, um, not just a specific, and uh, I can I can tell you about Pakistan too. I think the, you know, medical tourism, um, I mean, hasn't been marketed well by uh, Turkey. Um, and I don't know whatever the reason is, but I think there has to be, um, you know, good, at least digital marketing. I mean, I have never seen a single advert ever in the US uh, for any of the medical treatment, or uh, neither have I seen in Pakistan. So I think the issue is um, that people know about this. One way or another, they know um, that, you know, you can get the hair transplant, you can get the teeth fixed, you can get X, Y, Z done, um, um, you know, the skin thing you can do. Um, like some cosmetic things you can do. Uh, they know that, but what is the next step? They don't know where to go to, uh, who to yeah. talk to, or whether they can actually um, trust them. Uh, they have no idea. And if something goes out, uh, what to expect? I mean, would they be able, would they be able to actually sue them? If, if you look at it like from US perspective, these guys like ready to sue anybody, any, everybody in the world if something is not according to their standards. So uh, they have to look at it from that perspective. And some, I mean, old guys has the chronic diseases and they cannot afford it. I mean, especially in the US market, they simply cannot afford it, but they can afford something which they can um, in, in Turkey. I'll just give you um, one example here. Uh, tooth implant one is about 3,000 to 3,500. Again, please I mean, number. 3,000 to 3,500. Hmm. So imagine, I mean, with, with double that money, you can probably have the whole mouth in Turkey. I don't know, you can tell me. No, it's um, true, if, it's total true. And you probably would have like a nice time over there and then the hotel is free, uh, accommodation is free and they'll take care of you. Um, so those kind of things. So my point is that, let's say if I am in that case, like I, I have Brother Yavis, I'll, I'll pick up a phone, talk to him. I have some uh, friend of mine, uh, like here in the community living here, I'll probably ask him, 
uh, and I'll say, brother, yeah, can you know tell me some good space which you can trust, and then mm-hmm. I'll arrive one day and then do it. Not everybody has brother Yavis. So um, you have to, um, you know, look at it from that perspective. And it is a great potential. It's not going to go or diminish anytime soon. Uh, this is going to be expensive, especially for the, for the U.S. market. Uh, for the Pakistani market, uh, yes, people are going to be interested. Uh, people, but they simply don't know they have that option. You have to reach out to them. Yeah, but uh, they also uh, should not know about uh, U.S. opportunities besides uh, the, you know, uh, perspective of you know United States. I mean, uh, I I also didn't see any U.S. Uh, healthcare facility commercial online. Uh, maybe also U.S. doesn't have Turkey. Turkey doesn't have. Uh, but how they can uh, say that we can go to U.S. It's uh, totally r- related, but maybe perception or something what do you say about that so so look any pakistani who goes to uh, get uh, you know operated or like some operation needs to be done or like some um, you know whatever needs to be done uh, they, uh, they go to uk or us or any european uh, first of all mm-hmm. these are the only two destinations for pakistani like uk okay. and us so exactly. uh, if they if they go there they know what they're going to be paying the premium And they have like, uh, you know, filthy money. So they don't care that they have to actually pay maybe like $60,000 or $100,000 for like um, some acute uh, procedure. Um, What you are uh, after or like whatever your client segmentation is, is basically who are price conscious. So forget about those people who are going to be, who aren't price conscious because they, They think that the, anything is going to be operated in Turkey is going to be slightly lesser than what they're going to get in the U.S., which is not true in all the times. Um, but uh, in fact, I'll tell you one point. I mean, cancer, uh, uh, you know, treatment you can get in Pakistan anywhere better than anywhere in the world. They have the mm-hmm. facility, but they people think that okay, this is somewhat lower than uh, lower standard than what they're going to get anywhere else. So they, if they can afford it, they probably would go to the U.S. and get a lower uh, treatment um, but, and pay like 10 times the money. So my recommendation would be um, focus on those people who, um, you know, are price conscious to an extent, but still can afford it. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Great. And I'm glad, Anes, you're one of those who actually enjoyed Pakistan in January. And I'm so happy, Brother Huram, for your great support. Let me take maybe two or three more presentations. I know it's moving forward. Uh, time is flying. And it's not easy to find Brother Huram dedicated almost more than two hours from Chicago. I, I, I can't thank you enough, Brother. This means a lot for the Turkish startup community. And these are just, I'm calling by surprise, let's say, Jamil Alpay Sunetchi from TP Matrix. Uh, Brother Yavis, uh, Brother Yavis, could we, uh, you know, ask them to actually ask any specific question if they have? Because of the course. presentation, I think, yeah, that's much better because I'm of not course. able to sometimes, like, you know, grasp the whole thing. And um, so, of course, I think it's better. Maybe one or two more presentation, and then we do questions, and then finish it, mm-hmm. inshallah. But you're right. Sure. It's better to make discussion rather than the pitching event is something different. But they are so excited when they see you, they <laughs> want them, you to know as well, even if it's one minute pitch, brother. Okay, uh, Jamil Alpay Sunnetchi, uh, if yeah. you're around, you're, you're welcome, brother. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my presentation is short enough, I think, for you, maybe one or maybe two minutes. Uh, my name is Alpay, I'm the co founder of TP Metrics. Uh, after the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and European Union uh, Green Deal, uh, companies who want to survive have to report and limit their environmental impact and have to be uh, carbon neutral by uh, 2050. In order to not to be affected by the carbon border adjustment mechanism, which will come into the effect in September 2023, uh, companies should act and complete their analysis and reporting immediately. Tripometrics develop. Uh, SaaS platform and API services 
uh, for uh, carbon footprint accounting, water footprint accounting, and ESG gap analysis. These processes can take uh, more than one year with classical methodology or cons consultancy. And Tripmetrics reduce this process only to one day and one employee. Uh, for in just two, uh, two, 22 months, Tripmetrics gain over 80 customers, such as Ishbank, Garanti, Acıbadem. They are very big companies in Turkey, maybe you know. Uh, and Sokar, Toyota to show up the Ryan Enterprise uh, rent a car. Uh, and we became a team of 11 people in this period. And also, uh, we are now an uh, official partner of Greenhouse Guest Protocol, which uh, manages the carbon footprint uh, methodology in the world. And also, we are official partner of WWF Turkey uh, Green Office Sustainability Program. We are managing that program for two years. Uh, and our market size is uh, $9.6 billion, according to uh, Technavio for uh, 2026 projection. And yeah, we have some uh, you know, uh, competitors, but uh, we can uh, manage this process very easily in Turkey because we have you know, more than eight customers now, and we want to expand our uh, market to new uh, countries like Europe or uh, South Asia, uh, look, for example, some uh, textile industry uh, uh, countries like maybe uh, your country, let's say. Um, yeah, thanks so much for listening. Oh, that's a great, uh, great product. I don't know how you are doing it within a day. Um, I won't go into the details because uh, <laughs> that's going to actually take a lot yeah, of time. Yeah. But, also, uh, we finish Toyota to show uh, four different factories in just four hours. So, yeah, we can do it very quickly. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I don't know how authentic it is. <laughs> like, <laughs> we need, yeah, to, anyway, you need to make you need to make Huram believe in it. You know, <laughs> Huram is very uh, but, you know uh, <laughs> to the point. He will say, "Okay, I trust you, but prove for me." You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, very easy for us. Yeah, so we can. Uh -huh. do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, you're. Uh, I mean, if you haven't expanded yourself in Europe, I mean, that's that's your market. But the problem is. I think one thing you have to keep in mind, uh, if it was before the Ukraine war, I think you would have been making a lot of money. Um, now the countries, the, their whole deadlines are kind of like, they're not gonna meet. Like Germany is not gonna meet their deadlines about the actual electric cars. Uh, France doesn't care anymore, in fact. Uh, and UK, forget about it. So the, the, the point is, they, I mean, UK is trying as hard, but I mean, they are not, really paying attention much, um, but keep going. I mean, keep going. And I think this is the future. This is where the company is gonna need the service. Uh, and I would just say like, I don't know whether you remember like just before the GDPR, uh, when the GDPR kicked in, I mean, every company wanted some sort of like consultancy um, of that. And every, it was such a great rush that, uh, you know, people, because it was a, uh, you know, fine, it was going to happen. They had to pay millions of dollars, like if they were not able yeah. to actually prove that they are certified. So, I mean, you, maybe that kind of a situation, if it happens, um, which could happen in 25, 26, 20, 26, 27, um, then you probably would be able to actually make tons of money at that time. Uh, uh, but right now, because the geopolitical situation is kind of like changing, um, because the Ukraine war and all that, like, I mean, these European countries are not that interested, but I think it's a great product. Uh, if you say um, um, that um, if it does what you say, then it's a great thing. And I think mm -hmm. it's a lot of money to be made. And I think the good thing is that um, uh, you are going to be really content in your heart that you are doing a great thing, uh, ultimately a saving planet. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you, Huram. I really, really appreciate it. Let's listen to Kadir Tamrak, Santariva, and then slowly start closing with final questions. Kadir, the floor is yours. Thanks so much, Mr. Yavuz. And hi again, Mr. Kuram. I hope everything is going well <laughs> for everyone. Thank you. And I'm starting to just may I start. You can see it now. But you can do also full yeah. page if you like. 
Yeah, I'm going to make it full page. Uh, I'm talking about the Sentry. Well, and this time I'm co-founder of the IWAS Soft Technology and Information Company. So we are we are working about the technologies and metaverse and blockchain pro projects and more. So I'm talking about Santriva project. Santriva is virtual business and incubation center. So we are we have focused six problem about this new world, new business world. The first one building in the physical world, the investment costs very high cost, you know. And second one, runaway and development activities to be carried out the buildings take very long time periods and costs and as we say as we live in the uh, near time natural desires of buildings and centers epidemic except etc they carrying high risk in the physical world due to the due to the working remote remote work work model is very popular in the end days so many many people don't uh, don't visit their offices anymore in the centers and more and incubation and technology centers have problems in their activities and participants particip participants in activities they organize for entrepreneurs. And what is the Santriva? Santriva is the state of the physical world developed in the line of the needs and demand of the today's entrepreneurs with the development of technology and transfers to the metaverse in a SaaS software as a, as a service structure supported by blockchain and gamification, gamification technologies. Our solutions are, we, we are creating in a 3D universe for with no limited and very low cost. Within the center of offices, meeting rooms and event rooms will be created quickly. Centriva does not go in the risk of the physical words, natural desires, epidemics, and more. We are creating a virtual world independent of the time and space. We carry all the management activities, business process, and activities of incubation and technology centers managers to the digital new world. The Centriva operation structure have five steps. The, so, the first one, Centriva Ecom, B2C business model, e-commerce in, intra, infrastructure world, memberships of memberships are sold on a package basis and memberships are managed. The second, uh, the second step, management panel. Platform managers screen their centers, their centers within the center are managed and permissions and authorized created. The third one, Centriva through the free zone. This is a very, very, very important part of our project because our project like a digital twin for the business, business world, but the free zone is really independent part of our project because B2B, B2B structure that allows the business to offer their products and services to the Centriva members. Events, activities, and ads. Use of the activities areas within the free zone, renting of advertising areas. The, the five, five, step, five step is the details report. All activities of the users within the Centriva will be recorded and covered in the meaning reports with the data mining methods and BA tools. The center by users operation structure is business or incubation centers membership. Membership of, in, membership of institutors, institu, institu, institu, institu, centers by selected packages and throughout center by eco. The, the second step is second step is creating virtual centers thanks to the center by SAS SAS features to the virtual center is ready to the use within the second after the membership is confirmed. The second the third step is moving the business to the 3D to the virtual universe. Center by quickly as, as quickly async their own business to the close close or shared offices with a user friendly interface. Event and activities with the Santriva, the, with, the, with Santriva, the centers can offer services, activities, and mentoring activities in the physical world at the same time with the digital world. Follow up and detailed report. All the digital footprints, footprints of the enterprises within the Santriva are recorded, and instance of the enterprise based reporting operation are carried out to carry out time and, and come to the managers. Environment and uh, architect, architecture. 
the free zone and three the business and incubation centers building will be designing a modern structure in the landscape areas in the landscape areas with the different times focus on the water nature technology and history will be created uh, we are created we are created a virtual world universe with that will be multiplayer so all the enterprises and members will be so can social network and we will follow all the footprints at the same we have many advantages advantages but we are create, we are cre creating the digital twins of the real world so we are sharing some of them for example we are giving to we are giving to meeting room reservation systems digital advertising areas the field and field act of activities service and details reports when we talk about the market size as of the 2022 there were approximately 200 220 million companies and 595 million entrepreneurs worldwide gonna be work every day and a total of the three and 33 33 nearly 33 million sam were activity in the united states in 2022 and just five million of them opening the last years in europe there are 20, 23 companies in in china nearly one 100 million companies in india nearly 20, 23 companies in turkey of course there are uh, there are 15 companies going to every day uh, looking for their new words new customers and new business process and we can handle all this process for them at SWOT analyze we have a high experience team all of our experience all of our teams gonna academic and we are giving lessons about technology blockchain and more so we have a software company we have we have many experience about the virtual world virtual fairs virtual events and more this our opportunity is about uh, after the ep epidemic uh, people's people's love the co-working offices people's love the remote model working and weakness we are talking about the digital world so the cost and uh, digital cost server cost and more and trades of course uh, cyber security is very important for us uh, we, uh, our competitors analyze uh, directly competitors our project will be the first live platform for the carry metaverse global the supporting business and incubation centers with the blockchain technology in the 3D structure and using the gamification technologies. Therefore, we don't not have directly com directly competitors. Indirect competitors among our indirect competitors are our project are the open world metaverse, meta universe, uh, virtual ex ex exhibitions, and virtual event platforms like uh, the Central Alliance and Anthosphere and more. We have three revenue models. One of them, the membership membership revenues, sellers of the business and incubation centers membership packages, pre zone offices membership sellers. And second one, advertising revenue, sellers of the digital advertising space within this pre zone and virtual centers within the center. Of course, event re revenue, regular revenue will be provided to project with the uh, virtual events and organized organize organizations to be created based on the demands and of the enterprise and external customer within the century our team is a high experience team and we are going we are all of us academic and we are already create many virtual projects so we can we can we we are not just talking about the dream we already made many things about the virtual world so budget and amount of the share as i was of software and information technology as a result of the budget calculator calcul calculations for our Santriva project our proposal and demand are as follows in the united states a 10 per, a 10 pers, a 10 pers, person share in the our newly established Santriva company in a budget of the one hundred thousand dollar for project cost in planet and we believe that this this investment this investment gonna be really very quickly can create the 
return of the investments. Thank you. Listen to me again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any comments, Ura? Yeah. Uh, how much money have you made so far? Have you or no? Ne kadar para yaptınız şimdiye kadar? Nearly two two thousand and two hundred thousand dollars nearly because we are working and we are we start to create metaverse and we we start to create a virtual platforms nearly twenty nine twenty and nineteen uh, before we at starting the epidemic all over the world you know okay so let me let me ask again and be clear clear about that you have made so far two hundred thousand dollars yeah because your we, company. Yeah, is that correct? Yes, but we earn money too at the same time because we we give the uh, virtual fair virtual fair platforms and services to the many organization. We are working the government and more, so we earn more than more. <laughs> okay, um, I think you are just all over the place, um, and I think your presentation doesn't really show that you are working or you are a metaverse company. Um, it just simply doesn't show that. Um, and stop reading from the slides. Um, okay, that's okay, not yeah. a good way of like presentation. Um, this is something you have actually pinpointed a niche which uh, going to be the future. The problem is that like AI, there is a gap in the market. So it's, it's not predicted. The way it was getting predicted that it's going to happen very soon, it's not happening very soon. It's going to take time. And as I said, because of the pandemic, because of the geopolitical uncertainty, there are certain things have changed. Um, so much so that the, what the people were expecting that the ultimately uh, the blockchain projects are going to be ultimately through the roof and uh, ultimately, this is going to become every country is going to be launching a digital coin and we're going to be living in a virtual space and Facebook changing its name to Meta and then ultimately using a VR glasses and all that kind of thing that all of a sudden stopped a year ago, year and a half ago. And a uh, lot of people wasted a lot of money in that um, and people are still wasting a lot of money in it. But as I said, I mean, this is something which is going to work. Uh, which is going to somehow come around the corner unless there's some major catastrophe is going to happen in the world. Um, uh, I would suggest that if you are working for certain clients and they want something for, from you to create like a virtual space, do that by all means, and that would just keep you going. But um, create a space, create a city, but it has to be, it, it cannot be just like a, uh, you know, real estate thing. Okay, come here, buy the land, buy, do this, or buy the shop, or like do this. It has to be a comprehensive thing. Probably would take you three years to build it with this team. But uh, work on that. And by that time, I think this is something, and don't go into this like exhibition thing and then have the virtual thing and virtual this and virtual that. Have a very, very focus. If your slide says, that is going to be a um, virtual e-com place. Mm -hmm. Then just focus on it. Take three years to build it because that's how long it's going to take you to build it. So um, it's going to take you six to eight months to build a one mall. Mm -hmm. I mean, forget about the city. So uh, it's going to take a lot of time to build it and it has to be of that level. Uh, it has to have like that clarity. It has to have like... a um, you know, uniqueness and professionalism and it, sh it should look unique and it should have like a uh, version of um, kind of like uh, VR plus they can do that on the computer plus they can use the AR glasses. Now Vision Pro has come out. Um, not many people are going to buy it because of the price, but still there would be few people. Um, so as I said, I mean, this is the future, but just focus on one thing. If you want to Focus on e-commerce thing, make like a big mall, like uh, make 10 malls or 20 malls or like make parks and 
and then get people to come in for free and then do the shopping and then get the sell those shops, um, get the bigger brands on board, get them that make it so good that, you know, next would jump on it or say, okay, fine, we are ready to pay you, you know, half a million dollar uh, to get a space here because you are promising that you're going to bring in uh, 2 million people in this uh, space. Um, that would be my recommendation. But you are all over the place. The sooner you decrease your focus, it's going to be better for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Because uh, we are focusing the two things in this project. The first of that, we have a um, uh, center building in our project. This building, we are renting this all the floors with to the uh, centers, technology centers, incubation centers, and more. This is working like a mall, as you say that. And we have the, at the same time we have a free zone too in the in our platform. The free zone is for an independent platform in our project. So this is working like a digital twin and independent platform working together in this project. As you said that we have already a virtual mall, we have already virtual hospital, we have already virtual uh, another many many project. We already created we already created in in our backyard. And uh, there are there are many there are many people trying to create a virtual mall, as you say that. But we are thinking we must create a new one. So we already talk with many incubation centers, technology centers, and mentorships. They told us yes, we have a really big problems about the uh, visitor our uh, companies in our companies in our centers. We are send, we are uh, spending very big monies for these physical buildings. But they don't want to come because remote work, remote work style is very popular. For example, I have a I have an office in Aydın University, uh, technology centers, and when I go to the, uh, I must create the time to go to the, my office every day. So this is a big problem for uh, new works, new work, new work world, you know. So we're gonna solve these problems at the first time. But it uh, uh, at the free zone in our platform. As you said, that that platform working like a business B two B B two B mall for the companies giving the services, giving the uh, products to the other um, central offices. So we work about the B two C and B two B works business model at the same platform. So we don't wanna we don't wanna uh, lose our focus. As you said, that of course. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much for the feedback, for Ram, and thank you, Thanks Kadir, so for your presentation. Maybe one last one, Emre Kubele, and then we will get closing remarks from Ram. Emre, if you're available, you're welcome to present. Uh, you know, um, the floor is yours, Emre. Uh, good, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Mm -hmm. Ram, I know it took a lot of time from you and you know we really appreciate this as YouTube live and <laughs> you spent almost two hours 15 minutes and I can't thank you enough until Emre is ready. Anytime, brother, yeah, was... Thank you, brother. And and you know uh, Emre, if you're ready, you're welcome to present. If not, you'll get closing remarks from Ram. Emre'cim müsaitsen sunabilirsin yoksa sözü ee, veriyorum. Bir hocam. 30 saniyenizi alacağım hemen. Kusura tamam, tamam. tekrardan. Olur olur. Ya, okay. İngilizce olarak so, çok iyi in, Sıkıntı yok. E, Hürrem, so overall, uh, you know, uh, for the US market and for the Pakistan market, what are your recommendations for the Turkish startups? You have seen different levels. The ones that just start, the ones which are trying to start. The software ones, medtech ones. But this, this was a really impromptu, uh, without preparation kind of exercise. But well, what are your high level recommendations for these different types of companies? Hocam, hazırım şu an. Bir saniye, sorumu sordum. Bir saniye Emre'cim. Okay, so I mean, as I said, like in the beginning, pretty much that. Um, you know, before deciding that you're going to be actually opening up or like expanding into another market, it's, it's a general rule. 
um, that uh, you know you have to actually look at it in terms of the why you are going there, which customers you're going to be. Um, so one of the startup like I recommended that okay, send me the pictures straight away because I know that that product would be um, you know would sell here because everybody is talking about like organic stuff in the West as you probably sure. already know. Sure. So so it's, it's, it it just depends what would sell like in pakistan pakistan is a very unique market uh sometimes you have to actually um you know spend a lot in order to actually make make a lot um sure. uh, the more is going to look good the more people is going to actually come there um and one of the thing which always going to sell is the food so i don't know why the you know the the the the turkish startups are not actually doing some brick and mortar also that's why i was saying like healthcare i mean everybody is talking about like it and virtual space and this and that mm-hmm. but i mean there is a great great potential in like um brick and mortar i mean imagine yes. like if you have about 50 turkish ice cream places in pakistan you would I make see. millions you would make literally double the amount what you would make in turkey it has to look good it has to be very professional it has to, you have to bring in like 50 or 20 people um who are professionally trained and everything and they've been selling give them double the salary i can guarantee you you will make double triple the amount what you make in in turkey excellent it has to be um for instance turkish delight i mean i don't see turkish delight on pakistani streets or or the bakeries why because nobody attempted it i mean you know one when when pakistani actually enters in a bakery and i am talking about like the, the very poor guy they would spend probably one third of their monthly salary once they come out wow because wow. They, because they buy cake they buy like you know all you know the salty stuff they buy biscuits they buy so many things and whenever you have, you you go and visit somebody um your family your friend or somebody like you go visit their house um uh you know rather than actually giving them some gift you go to the bakery you buy a big cake and that's what you actually present when you go to somebody's house uh so sure. the bakery is is is uh, it's not just about actually baking the stuff is is tons of stuff over there sure so i do not see the sweets open up a turkish delight shop oh, it it would make exactly over there exactly um dry fruit nobody is thinking to actually bring the dry fruit into pakistan yeah <laughs> i mean there there are iranians are doing it actually pakistanis are doing it bringing all the iranian dry fruits there are like hundreds yeah. of his stuff like shawarma bringing the turkish <laughs> shawarma and, and all those sides such sort of things you exactly. can make tons of money so this is great um, great advertise not just technology but brick and mortar ones they are also welcome to pakistan or, or to united states as well i guess yeah and and and also when you because of the technology mindset because when you actually do this um you'll add the technology to it anyway and once you do the, add the technology to your brick and mortar you're going to be the most efficient person so sure. you probably going to be like looking into hundred of the things come and then book your slot into ice cream and i mean you know it was in the midst of all the political unrest hardies got open in pakistan Sure. Hardy's sure. it's like you know you go to this place in if you live in US like that was the I know Hardy's thing. yeah yeah you that would be the last thing you would go like if there's nothing left in the uh, in the world to <laughs> eat and everything is closed you would go to McDonald's you would go to Hardy's <laughs> but when it opens in Pakistan people line up i mean there people lined up just for a coffee for like 4 hours from Hardy's and i was like That's crazy. what's wrong with these people what's wrong with these people <laughs> so so oh catching my God. on their sentiments i hear you so, this yeah. is great uh, take home message emre wants to show a video i think he has a agricultural yes. technology drone go ahead emre show the video Emre has his own drone uh, technology for agriculture and his English is not extremely good but he wanted to show this video for you 
so uh, he's now uh, building which has more capabilities compared to its competitors. And this is actually his own drone, which he utilized. And he also did lots of testing on them. And uh, uh, he's very excited about it. So he wanted to show this to you. And, you know, for precision agriculture, it's very important to utilize, uh, you know, drone technology. So my comment on that is, uh, it's very small. It has to be, you know, like he has to scale it and make it bigger. Um, and uh, that drone has to actually be able to actually lift enough weight, uh, which is sort of like close to maybe like a 50 kg or something. Um, that's when the real, you know, work come in. Um, I was this close to actually invest in one of the Pakistani startups. They were very close to actually building it. They made the prototype and everything. Uh, but then ultimately, I, I, I could not trust those guys. They, they, they were not moving forward with good pace and all that. Um, mm -hmm. They did that like about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, their calculation was that even there, like within an hour, uh, they could do, I mean, they were claiming really high claims. And that's where that was just like put me off. Um, like about, I think, up to 50 acres in two hours. And um, and I was like, you know, it's it's going to be a problem. Uh, I, I do not trust at this point in time. So you have sure. to show it to me. And they were not able to convince me. Uh, so sure. this is a great thing. Uh, you have to run it as a service um, mm -hmm. for any country. Like, I mean, if just launch a website, just tell them like, okay, you are this prayer guy. Um, you, how many acres you have and what, what sprays you want. And then you charge them on, on uh, like whatever acreage level basis. Um, Excellent. And that's how you start, make the money and then improve your drone. That needs to be improved Perfect. big time. Perfect. Uh, Emrecim, uh, 50 kilogram ve üstü taşıması daha iyi olur diyor. Dört yıl önce böyle bir firma az kalsın yatırım yapıyormuş kendisi. Ama son ee, noktada... İki tane dronumuz var orada. Dediğiniz gibi ikinci dronumuz, iki hektarlık olan dronumuz 50 kilo üzerinde bir durum. Çok büyük. Kendi istediği katitede birinci... He has two üstü. versions. One is above 50 kg. One is below 50 kg. İnşallah. Evet. Maybe evet. down the line we can send you a better deck and share with you. We are at the end sure. of our time. Uh, let's get your final thoughts and close, brother Hürrem. It's now 10.30 in Turkey. And what time is it in Chicago now? 2.30. Okay, brothers. Thank <laughs> you so much. Not uh, let's herkes fotoğraflarını açsın. Everybody, please show your nice faces. We're gonna take a picture, but Hürrem, we want to also uh, hear your voice. Uh, tell us, uh, brother, your final words before we close, inshallah. Um, final words are, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, I do not see myself worthy enough to be listened to for that long. Um, I, I really hope <laughs> I really hope that you guys have uh, found it useful. Um, whatever I said or commented, um, always double check it. Uh, do not follow, doesn't matter how big the person is. Even Elon comes in and you have the ability to actually listen to him and ask the question, uh, do not. Because your journey is very unique. Nobody can actually tell you to actually go their way. So uh, they could be telling from their own experience. And because of that, there's going to be slightly difference. But use your own intellect. And experience is experience. Experience is good. You have to really pay attention to what other people are saying because they have actually learned it a hard way, but then try to transform that into your own situation. There are certain rules which are black and white and everybody would keep telling you about that. And there are other things which are grayscale. And in your situation is gonna be different because you are a different human being. Your parents were different. Your environment is different. Your product is different. Your problems are different. Your client is different. So um, with all these variables, your situation is gonna be very different. Um, one thing I would say, always do SWOT analysis. Get in the habit of doing it on 
uh, monthly basis. We begin with the monthly basis. Um, then try to do it on a weekly basis. And then get in the habit of doing on a daily basis in your mind. It doesn't have to be written down that you are making like all these calls and they say, what are the strengths? What are the weakness? What are the threats? No, not on daily basis, but at least in your head, what are the threats? What are the strengths? And this gives you assurance that you are not doing all wrong because there are strengths also. Because sometimes you feel very down and then nobody's there because you're all alone. Entrepreneurs all alone. Even your closest person is not with you. Keep that in mind. So you have to reassure yourself no, there are strengths too. Yes, there are weakness. And I have to be aware of threat, which is going to be, and I have seen big giants, literally big corporate sector, that they could not, although in their SWOT analysis, the threats were written down, that there's going to be bigger fish come in. It happened to me. I had a literally multi-million dollar business in London and bigger fish came in. And within eight months, it ate it, literally. Wow. And we had wow. all the years in front of us that we were thinking that, okay, it's not going to actually, nothing is going to happen. And, I, and I'm talking about like literally at the advent of internet, literally in mid 90s, we were the only internet company. And all of a sudden, <laughs> like this company comes in and ate it. So wow. uh, because they could not mitigate the threat, your whole thing, doesn't matter how strong you are, doesn't matter how much cash flow you have, how much money you have in the bank. So my one advice is do SWOT analysis every month. It started with every month, then come down to week and then day. Thank you. Excellent. The amazing take home message. Everybody turn on your pictures. We're gonna take our right hand up, say goodbye and shout bridge global. One, two, three. Bridge Global. Bridge Global. <laughs> Bridge Global. Thank you, Huram. Thank you so much. Thank really you. grateful for your support. Take care, brother. Assalamu alaikum. You too, everybody. Thank you, brother. And share by, by all means, if anybody wants my number or any advice, I will. please do that. Thank you. You're in big trouble. You're in big trouble. Assalamu <laughs> <laughs> alaikum. Thank you, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Thank you. Wa alaikum assalam. Ladies and gentlemen, we finished our uh, YouTube program. Tomorrow, we'll be with Zekhan Foundation of America, Turkey chapter leader, Mustafa Akçelik, uh, especially talking about the cultural sensitivity and as you enter the markets, what needs to be done. Yarın, Zekhan Foundation of America, Türkiye Başkanı, uh, sevgili Mustafa Akçelik bizlerle beraber olacak. Gerçekten... Ee, özellikle uluslararası pazarlara girişte onda inanılmaz tecrübeleri var. Ve deprem döneminde de Adıyaman'da çok büyük bir şehrin e, bölgenin kuruluşu ve sivil toplum tarafında yaptıkları var. Ee, yarın harika bir program bizi bekliyor. Sevgiyle kalın. Çok teşekkür ediyorum. Bridge Global'la firmalarımızı yurt dışına açmaya devam ediyoruz. İnşallah. Evet. Sevgiler.